Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Survivor Stockwatch podcast. I'm your host, Taryn Armstrong, but I'm not alone today on this podcast. I have a, a very special uh, guest host collaboration crossover event extravaganza. Shannon is with me. How are you doing, Shannon? Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP's coverage of Survivor 43 for Survivor Global. I'm your host, Shannon Gus, as well, coincidentally, here with the second annual, no, seasonal, I guess, I don't know, we haven't discussed if this is mm. a seasonal thing, but crossover spectacular with the stopwatch with Taryn. Taryn, how are you doing? Now we both have to answer because we both introed because we're both hosts, and this is where it gets a little awkward. We're simultaneously doing well, I think. Yeah, we're both okay. We're both doing generally well. the answer. Yeah, I love. I mean, yeah. Could you imagine Taryn, opening they- a podcast and being like, "Actually, Taryn, it's been quite a day. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Well. Honestly, has well. It's funny that I mean, Taryn <laughs> comes here like he's so excited. He's smiling. Taryn just dealt with a lot of my internet issues and all of my- so. Fingers crossed, this podcast is okay. I feel like the worst co-host ever. I think I'm going to demote myself to guest, and you can host, and then we can get out of any of those issues i think i think we're both just guest hosts yes all right get yeah that's that's good i mean taryn i should say i don't want to bring it up but you you I mean, couldn't have gone worse with the draft <laughs> you kind of do want to bring it up i've done it within a minute of this podcast so i guess i'm I, the host because i don't um, know about that i feel like my draft went well uh it just it just needed to be shifted by one degree in terms of what you were in my spot getting my picks and <laughs> in terms of uh in terms of i i feel like uh i just needed i just needed one more that's all i needed one more pick yeah <laughs> just all your picks went up so now. early right i mean yeah so you had what necker and Lindsay and janine was yep. that it yeah yeah that's not great that's not Look, great. You lost all three. Hashtag mom squad. I'm just ahead of my time. <laughs> but genuinely, I had all three picks left when you had lost all your picks. That's not good <laughs> for you. Yeah. Well, well what are you going to do? So I'm feeling pretty good. I don't know that I'm going to win the draft, but I've got, I guess, a third of a shot of winning it right now. Yeah. I mean, technically, you could be just as dead as I am. You just don't know it yet. 100% true. That's what you have to keep telling yourself. Everyone's going to lose eventually. You just lost the quickest. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, well, not the quickest because I did not get the grenade. Yeah. Well, that, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. But just in terms of your picks going. But Taryn, how have you enjoyed the season? And I say in my host duties that I won in the draft that I've decided I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the season has been interesting because I was really enjoying it at first. I really like the cast. Um, but it's been a little bit rocky for me, especially since the merge where, you know, more than any season in sort of recent memory, I feel like they've been pretty lax on explaining the why of what's happening. Um, and, uh, and, and like how things are going down. I feel like I, I approach every episode with a roulette wheel of like, which are the two names that are going to pop up as targets? I don't know because it could literally be anybody and none of the relationships that we know of seem to matter when it comes to who's being targeted. Yeah, no, it was killing me listening to you and Chantel last week because I can hear frustration coming from Big Brother that you're like, we just know so little and they like, you know, <laughs> yeah. misconstrue things and then Dwight lied in the exit. I feel like coming from a show where the point is that you see everything that must have been killing you like more than most. So, I mean, I, yeah, we've probably spoken about this, but I come, I mean, Survivor South Africa is probably more similar to Big Brother and we get a lot more. And Australian Survivor, we get, you know, it's it's so so edited that this is like better in comparison but you like i i know it must frustrate you to not get like the raw organic material yeah and and like obviously i think i approach it from that angle and i'm always gonna want more um but even in comparison to other survivor seasons i feel like yeah i i, I feel like we've been left in the dark um and i've always been somebody that's that's had issue with like tribals being boring and I feel like that's really, you know, coming to a head as well in this season, uh, which is just like a misuse of time, it feels like. 
so I, I have some some issues with the season, but I'm still I, I'm still in it. Like uh, like I am still invested in the characters. It's ju- it kind of just feels like I, I I've got. It, it's almost like you know, end of of Game of Thrones kind of era, where it's like I I, I like the characters. Thrones, but, yeah. uh, it's yeah. like I'm I'm somewhat invested <laughs> in the characters, but the the plot is nonsense, and they're just right. doing random things. Right. Well, everything I know about the end of Game of Thrones that feels like it's not really a compliment, based on like literally everything no. I've ever heard of that as someone who doesn't watch. But yeah. I mean, I love this episode. I feel like this was my favorite episode of the season. And I feel like different people are saying that about different episodes each week, which shows maybe that it's more consistent than like these like kind of spectacular things or like big kind of iconic moments. But I really like this episode. I mean, I thought the search was really funny. I know that people didn't love the time was getting wasted there, but people love that scene. Like that's an iconic oh, scene. Yeah. I feel like that's a really enjoyable scene. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's was a all, search and the, that's the worth showing. Was great. I agree. The challenge was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I mean, the vote, I think there was some interesting strategy. The tribal council was probably the most interesting that it's been. So I think we got, we got it all. I mean, it had something for everyone. It was, it was a good episode. And and I, and I liked the previous episode as well. I think was, that was the one with the steps, right? The, uh, (laughs) the steps to blindsiding somebody at the checklist. Last week. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I liked that episode, I, and I did like this episode. I feel like the yeah, the search for the idol was great uh, because of how utterly ridiculous it was. The challenge was <laughs> was fun, even though it was terrifying. Um, and the strategy mm-hmm. for this vote was interesting. I feel like Jesse did something that not a lot of people gravitate toward, um, and 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 I think there's a lot to talk about with that. My my only lingering frustration with the episode is. Carla's vote and like how did yeah. how did we get there with Carla? Yeah. Um, but that's I mean that's more frustrating in this episode because of all the prior lack of explanation in the context only of this episode. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, yeah, I think overall pretty good episode. Yeah, I knew that would be killing you because that's the confusing thing when so much is made of putting Cassidy and Carla against each other. And the whole point is like Carla's going to vote for Cassidy. And this is something that they described in the most recent season of Survivor South Africa as strategically starving. So you have like a big opponent in, the, in that context. It was like a challenge beast that they couldn't get out because he kept winning. So they were like, well, we're going to make him look really dumb in front of the jury, always voting correctly. And they called it strategically starving. And then she does vote for Sammy. Now, Sammy said in the exits that it was, he thinks it was due to him saying he was going to play shot in the dark. And um, we can talk that through, like, may, you know, maybe Carla thought, well, why would Sammy be worried enough to do this? He's probably in trouble. Am I on the out? And if that's true, then there's not a lot the show can do about that. Like, if she's making a game time decision at Tribal, um, they, they uh, the only thing they can do is, ha- like, show her saying that within the first 30 seconds of next episode, which we'll probably find out whatever it was in those first 30 seconds. So that's what Sammy's saying in the exits. But I knew that that one would be tough for you to swallow because it's such a big part of Jesse's move and then doesn't come to fruition. Um, So yeah, that that was, we can talk through a bit of that, but that was probably the biggest miss. Otherwise, like I felt actually what I really liked about this episode was I went into tribal council and I was like, it could be Cassidy or Sammy because we go in with like Jesse and Cody disagreeing and both having their points on that. And like that made me nervous because I liked them both. And I like, I, my heart was beating, like I didn't know which way it was going to go, but I thought whichever way it goes, I will understand it. And that would largely be true of both votes. So I I like that we got the context to know like it, it was like a toss up, like in terms of the edit, but either way we'd understand. Yeah, I, I will say the the uh, another part that I didn't understand, I and I guess most of my criticism for the episode specifically comes from Carla, uh, is that and, and this again could be not on to the not on the show and more on Carla, but like I fully don't understand. <laughs> any of what Carla is thinking when it comes to voting out. Yeah, Cassidy. no, that that feels like, like I agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it just felt like it came out of nowhere that like all of a sudden she's like, "Wow, well, what happened is I told Cassidy about my idol. Since when? When did this happen? I have no idea." Uh and now she's like not trusting her maybe once her out, but but why? Like what was your plan beforehand and how how it does taking Cassidy out incorporate into that like where where do you think your end game is you just lost sammy uh, who tried to vote you out like I, i'm just i'm confused about all of carla's motivations um and i feel like they've been so light on giving us 
Carla's motivations. And I've been so high on her game because it's felt like she's been in such a great spot. And now I just feel so lost as to like, where has her path even been this whole season at this point? Yeah, no, I agree. It's been a rough couple of episodes for Carla. I feel like this is not on the show. I mean, I should say for the show, Rob's fact checker said that this is like the best the show has been this season and last season at giving everyone a confessional every episode since China. So like we should really get the perspectives and the motivation. Um, For Carla, like maybe this is on her. And like to play like extreme devil's advocate because I'm also pretty low on what she was doing in this episode. But like Cassidy is saying, you know, I'm worried about people taking me out for my proximity to Carla, which is obviously something that they were thinking of doing in this episode. And I said last week, I'm like, at a point, Cassidy should take Carla out. Like, objectively speaking, they, you know, have been in similar spots, but Carla's just been that much better, leading it more. Like, if she's thinking about it from a logical perspective, Cassidy should come for her. Um, In saying that, like, that's not anything we've seen from Cassidy. Like, when Cassidy says, I want the two of us in in the finale like we have no reason to distrust that we haven't seen or tell anyone about the idol even though everyone seems to just know about it anyway so um it it seems like a bad read on Carla's behalf even if like as a logical play maybe she's thinking if I was in Cassidy's shoes I'd take me out and she'd be right in that like that would be the move so maybe she's just thinking through the logic even though she's like misreading that person from what we can see yeah I, I mean from from my perspective and it's again hard you know we're relying on an edit and yeah. it's not even been a super great edit in terms of uh, helping us understand the strategic motivations of players. But my perspective on Cassidy is that uh, she doesn't really strike me as the kind of player that would take the shot at Carla if she felt like she's been working with her. Uh, you know, she's the player that that cast that like uh, soul vote on Ryan the time that she was like, no, no, no. Why are we taking out another woman? It should be Ryan. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Like she just doesn't strike me as the person that's going to be like, all right. Time to be the last woman left at final six or final five. Like maybe she would take the shot at final four or something uh, to be like, let, you know, I can't beat Carla. But I just don't quite see it before then. Um, but who knows, really? Because I, I, you know, I don't even know that much about uh, Cassidy's, you know, long term strategic uh, ideas either. So. No, I mean, it does seem like a misread that. Cassidy would do that it felt like I want like for Sammy who went home obviously I thought it like other than like the um lie at the beginning of the episode which I'm sure we'll talk about like uh I thought it was a good episode for Sammy like it feels like for, for Carla who's such an agent player it feels like Sammy is puppeteering her in this moment because it's great for him mm-hmm. to get the target on someone else when he's in so much danger and it's terrible for Carla who's saying let's get Cassidy and we hear from Gabler and Cody oh well let's get Cassidy and then Carla like she's kind of signing her own death warrant, whether that would have happened, I'm not sure, but it definitely was a way they could have gone. Um, and she's misreading Cassidy in that. So, I mean, I don't feel like this is on the show. I feel like it was a confusing read from Carla. Like she says she wants to go on the offense, but I feel like if you want to do that, like that person is Jesse and that would be a very aggressive move. And then you'd have your idol and you'd go from there. But like, I don't think going on the offense is taking out Cassidy, who I think she could sit next to at the end. And I think maybe would actually sit with her, like based on, Again, as you say, the little information we have. Yeah, it's it's just strange. And, and it did feel like the editors were trying to link uh, Sammy saying, hey, Cassidy's the one that told me to vote you out um, to the idea that Carla now wants Cassidy out. But it, it, that that particular like line rang a little hollow to me because we never see Cassidy or uh, Carla saying like, ah, I believe Sammy when he says that Cassidy want me to want to be out. Like we never actually see her think that that that's the truth, uh, and it and it doesn't make sense to think it's the truth because it's kind of nonsense. Um, so you know, it 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 felt like they were trying to give that as the reason, but it didn't feel like it was the real reason, especially because she's talking about something that happened a while ago, I think, where she told Cassidy about her idol. Um, and, and she's worried about that. My, my thought was maybe because he's now saying, I was worried that you had an idol. In fact, this, this is what he, uh, says when they get back from the previous tribal. Like, I, I was thinking if you had an idol and you played an idol and it was in the majority, that would be great. Cause then you could just play the idol and then Noah would just go home anyways. And you see where it got me. <laughs> Which was a terrible explanation, Sammy, please. but he, he's bringing up the fact that she might have an idol. And if she's maybe not aware that other people are aware that she has an idol, yeah. then maybe you can see a world where she thinks, how do they know I have an idol? <gasps> Cassidy's the only person I told. 
And then maybe yeah. that plus Sammy saying, Cassie told me to vote you out. Maybe you can see that where the paranoia seeds start to sprout. Um, st I, I still don't co-sign that line of reasoning. I mean, it, you did the beats. That's how they know. You should have immediately yeah. assumed that everybody knew. But uh, but maybe that's where it was. No, I think that's a great point. I do. I think that like if you look at these two bits of information, which is, again, the first bit being this other misread in that she thinks no one else knows about the immunity bracelet, as they call it, because she's been saying that Lindsay was making the bracelet and we, and we we all thought that they bought that for ages until last episode, Jesse was like, but we, I like, I know that she has an idol and it's more of an open secret. So the fact that she's so out of the loop on the knowledge of that is already like, she's starting at a difficult basis um, in which to like, you know, work around that because she doesn't know that they know that she has an idol. So then she is obviously suspicious of Cassidy. And then I think that it was her own regret. Like she seemed to immediately regret telling Cassidy whenever that was about the idol. So as much as I feel like uh, Sammy as an amazing fire maker was stoking those flames, I think that she, it was more like she was like looking at herself, like I've done, done this thing where I thought about my idol and now I'm trying to like rectify that mistake. I've seen that happen with players before, like in Australian Survivor, a player, Henry, like he told an ally at the time, like a secret from home that he was going to keep a secret. And then was like, oh, regret. Now I'm have to take her out, you know, like because you're trying to like rectify your own mistake. So I think that it was a lot of her regretting that and then trying to solve it. And then, yeah, maybe connecting those things about why there's suspicion that she could have an idol and not sensing that it was about the beads. And I think as well, like Cassidy had some great reads in this episode. One of them being like, she, she was so on the money. Like I want to vote out Sammy because he might like so mistrust about me and like say, and like, that was exactly what he was doing. But like, it was such a good read that it was kind of suspicious. If I was Kyle, I'd be like, well, yeah. why would you think that if you weren't doing anything bad, you know, like, like, and that is literally what he was doing. Like, she just read it so well, like he's on the bottom. So he's going to cause chaos. I don't want to get caught up in the chaos. But if I was Kyle, I'd be like, oh, so you're worried he's going to say something about you or it sounds like you are guilty, you know, like it was just like that good a read. So I can see how she would come to these conclusions, but like the broader like read was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. If, if somebody tells me, uh, so like if if Rob comes to me and says, "Hey, Taryn, Shannon has been talking uh some mad crap," uh, or or if he says, "Yeah, like <laughs> uh, Shannon, he she really hates you," and then you come to me and you say, "Hey, Taryn, uh, just in case, if Rob is saying anything about me, he's definitely lying." I'm gonna be like, "Okay, <laughs> it's yeah, definitely exactly. true." Now I know that because you how would you know? Is that good to read? Yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> like when she said that, she's like, "I'm really worried that Sammy's gonna say something bad about me." I'm like. Wow, like that was prophetic, but now it looks like you like you, you did the thing you said because you knew he was going to say something, but she just like seemed to pick it out of thin air. Like it's a credit to her, but it, I think it, it did come across as like super suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, Sammy is uh, is not doing well. He's floundering with the the explanations. Uh, I have another sound bite. I don't remember what this is though. It's not as bad as you think. It'll be better tomorrow. Morning. Okay. So this is <laughs> this is Owen. Owen is also upset yeah. because Owen was also left out of the vote and he can't seem to get a vote right. Uh, and I had this moment when Gabler then pu pulls Owen aside and he says, don't worry, I've got a plan. It's not as bad as you think. It'll be better tomorrow morning. It'll, it'll be better tomorrow morning. Don't worry. This is how the game works. And I was just thinking like, I'm Owen. I came into the game of Survivor, a super fan expecting to hopefully play like a, a solid game be in control on. of my yeah. own fate and yeah. then time after time i'm left out i'm realizing i'm not playing the game i wanted to and now i have gabler talking to me <laughs> like he's tony vlachos <laughs> like don't worry don't worry owen i've got the plan just do what i say i'm just gonna be like oh man what does my survivor life come to that is what it felt like for Owen. I mean, I called him the Charlie Brown on the last podcast and then that I did last week with Rob and um, he called himself the Charlie Brown. Like I feel so bad for Owen, but I kind of also love the scene for him because it was so aware. I mean, you have some super fans who come out and flame out a little bit, but then we'll like come off the show defending their moves, you know, like, oh, this is why it's everyone's fault but mine. And that can be like frustrating as a commentator to be like, sometimes the game doesn't go as you expect it to go. If Owen like, it's just been kind of like loss after loss when he just like didn't get in with those numbers, kind of chose the wrong path with Ellie and Janine and has been just floundering ever since trying to get like from bar to bar really. Um, and it's been so tough. And I think the best thing that he said and what I was so impressed with is he says to Gabler, he's like, you should take me to the end because I'm going to lose. And I thought 
this is a clarity and an awareness that is, and I, it sounds like I'm being facetious, but is actually so good because if he's aware of that, he should know, and we'll talk about his moves in this episode, but he should know that he's playing with house money. Like it hasn't gone as he thought and he needs to take some big swings, things like winning a ch- final four challenge, you're putting yourself into fire. Like it actually kind of reminds me of Chris Underwood and that obviously Chris Underwood was out of the game and Owen in many ways has been out of the game. He has probably as many correct votes as Chris Underwood had to, to this point in the game, despite the fact that Chris was on the edge of extinction. So if he knows that, then it should be about, okay, well, like, how do I set myself up well enough to like swing for the fences to like give myself a little bit of a chance? And if you compare that to someone like Gabler, who's saying in confessional, this is so good because no one's targeting me. We don't hear Gabler say, but is it a concern that no one's targeting me? Like, do they see me as a bit of a goat? Like, I feel like there's less awareness there. So I actually really like this clarity from Owen, even if as it was like in the devastation. And I really feel for him that as, as I've said, like through the season, like he he's out of it. And he's also such a super fan that he's so aware of like how poorly this is going in the moment. Like I can hear like, and God bless him. Like, I feel like he's listening to every podcast <laughs> through it. Um, and I just feel like it's such a, such a tough road for him. Cause he, he, and like, it's, it's a credit to him that he knows, you know, how bad this has been so far for him. It's, it's kind of an interesting spot because I've, especially in recent times, I've seen this play out actually pretty well for the, for the super fan that doesn't, that, that things don't go well for. Big Brother because, Canada, right? I was thinking of this as an example, but I've never watched it. And I'm pretty sure there's someone in Big Brother Canada. Big Brother Canada, it. Big yeah. Brother US. Um, yeah. I, I, that, uh, I, there were, there's a, a season of a, of a similar sort of survivor show. Uh, that recently uh, concluded with a similar way where it's like um, the the player comes in, they don't play the game they expected to. And because of that, they're like public, like genuinely like, ah, damn, like this is not going well for me. I don't think I can win. And they believe it and they get everyone else to believe it. But almost in in the in the in the talking about it, the being aware of it, they kind of negate a little bit of it because it is, you're right. There's a difference between Gabler being like, nobody's targeting me. I'm hiding in plain sight. I'm hiding in plain sight. And Owen, who's like, I don't think I can win because I haven't done anything yet. Um, and, 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 and I think that what I've seen in my experience with these games is that being aware that you haven't done anything is a much better position to be in because mm. you can then go to that final bit and be like, I wanted to, and I struggled through this game to survive week after week, vote after vote, and I just wanted to get my hands in, uh, to get my hands bloody. I wanted to, you know, get in the game, put me in, coach. Uh, but it just didn't work out for me. It just was a bad time. But look at me, I made it here. Uh, and there's like an earnestness in that, uh, mm. and and sort of like. Um, it also incorporates something that works really, that plays really well with juries, which is just like a passion for the game. Uh, that it, it it could actually kind of like boost you ahead of some other people that like maybe they made a couple of great moves, but also made some mistakes. Maybe they burned some people. Maybe they didn't. Um, but like it, it's it's not necessarily quite as dead as they as even they might assume. And we've had uh, I've seen recently a bunch of people make it to the finals thinking i'm drawing dead and then they dominate a jury vote uh so i actually don't mind this position for owen i mean it's still a hard part but like as you're talking about like that as the comparison i mean i've always thought if owen wins out from here or like in some way makes it through he'd be in like a danny botrite winner spot of being you know like on the bottom and making it through there's a lot of underdog winners like that um but like the way that you were speaking about it it kind of reminds me of sandra in heroes versus villains you know she did try a bunch Mm -hmm. of stuff that didn't come off and they could be like well what did you want me to do you know like you were not working with me and and then like the other people become the bad guy and you are in that underdog story that everyone loves so much so i do think it's a hard path but i think operating with awareness at any turn is, is a great basis um knowing that you have to what you need to do or like who you would need to sit next to or how you would need to articulate that because you're you have that self-awareness and that game awareness which i actually think i mean you can't say that owens had great game awareness he's been left out of so many votes but he's aware of his position and he knows what's happening with him and like the broader context of like the meaning of that and that that is a good place to start but like i'm not going to say that it's like a straight shot for him i think it's very very tricky and will take some massive moves in the next two episodes for me to make it make sense for this jury but i also i don't want to skip over sammy trying to lie about 
the vote. Like, I don't, I want to kind of come back to that. I mean, more than just the, the kind of circle he talked himself into with, uh, you know, saying that he just wanted her to play an idol that no one was meant to know about. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of this? I mean, we saw in this very season Cassidy lied about her Ryan vote and then Owen conveniently took it. He was even saying, I haven't voted correctly since Mariah, which wasn't even true. Like he actually did vote for Janine, but he's still going on that he voted for Ryan. So Does he think he voted he for Ryan? Like, <laughs> like, this is the Mandela effect like, on this at this point. Like he said it so much and they're all so hungry that he maybe thinks he voted for Ryan. Yeah. Um yeah it's it, this this was interesting because um I've been waiting for this side of Sammy, right? Where like in the first, in the pre-merge, it was like, he's doing well, but like, I just feel like the way that he's playing, the the demeanor that he has, uh, like something is gonna go wrong. And then it just felt like it kept going well until he started getting called a, a flip flopper. Uh, and I was like, oh, maybe they don't respect his game. Um, but then we're, we're now seeing like his first real taste of adversity and he's not super prepared for it. Uh, that he uh, he is going to try to lie initially and be like, no, it wasn't me. And then he's like, oh, crap, no, this isn't going to work. It actually was me. But but here, but here, here's why. It's like I, was, I was thinking if you had an idol, you played an idol, and it was in the majority, that would be great because then you could just play the idol and then Noel would just go home anyways. And you see where it got me. Yeah, right? So I was just voting for you because I just assumed that you had an idol and that you'd play the idol and that you, you'd cancel my vote out, which is what I actually secretly wanted. Uh, it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. I really wanted to cancel out my own vote. Uh, such a tough one for Sammy. I mean, we, we've seen it work in, in the most recent season of Australian Survivor. Someone voted for Sandra. Now... That's like, and it was like, just like one rogue vote, kind of like as a split option. Uh, you don't want to vote for the queen. So she comes back and she's like livid, but at the other guy, this other guy and the player who did it just like sold this guy out as a patsy. And he was like, I promise you I didn't. And mm. Sandra believed till she left. Spoiler alert, Sandra doesn't win that season. But like, she really believed that that guy had voted for her the whole time. And this other player just took that secret like to the grave and was just <laughs> having fun with it. So I, we've seen it happen. Like I've seen players like that wasn't me. Me. but i feel like you need way more numbers and way more chaos and the fact that this was like kind of a simplistic vote and there was only one other possible person to blame it on in gabler who had like such plausible deniability jesse's immediately like no so i like the attempt it was classic savvy to be so chaotic to even try to think of that i feel like kind of shows the best and the worst parts of sammy's game the fact that he would even attempt to creatively think of that but the fact that people weren't loving it were probably like two sides of the same coin of sammy in <laughs> in this season so i thought like that wasn't great the story wasn't great the way the last couple of episodes have gone and the, like the fallout from the james were not amazing but like from then i actually thought sammy was really good i just thought it was hilarious that he would try to lie about this yeah and, and honestly i thought it was was just overly ambitious to try to put suspicion on cassidy but grant given that it seems to work I, I i can't criticize it too much maybe there was a a, a gap in that relationship that he saw that, yeah. that we didn't see mm -hmm. until after he said it um but uh I, I would say given what i knew at the time it felt like a mistake uh to try to go that deep with it especially because you have jesse and cody right there as the proper targets like you don't even need to blame anybody for the vote you can just be like look the that's where i thought everyone was going i thought i had to go with them i'm glad you're here but the reality is i thought jesse was going in that direction and because i thought that i thought i had to follow turns out he flipped and i didn't even know and so he left me you know holding the bag but the but the reality is that him and cody are running this game uh, it, like no matter where we, I'm glad you're still here. I didn't want to vote you out. I just thought I had to, but now that we're both here, we have a chance to actually do something against Cody and, uh, and Jesse who are running this thing. Uh, that's where I would have gone. But again, yeah. like, it seems like in terms of what he did, it seems to have worked. So I, who knows? Well, it's wild that that is all true. You know, like when she said, who said my name other than Noel really putting it out, it was Jesse. Like, Jesse's the one who is having those conversations. Jesse made Sammy the fall guy in the step of the plan that that was last week. And Sammy has said in exits that, you know, Cody really brought him in and there was, like, good recovery there from both Cody and Carla. And Jesse, he was just kind of, like, 
too afraid of, you know, like going after the mob boss. But it does seem like that would have been the out. Now, I don't blame Sammy because I think that he might, he clearly is reading something between Cassidy and Carla and he pulls it off. I thought that Carla would go straight back to Cassidy and ask her. And Cassidy would be like, no. And then that would out Sammy. But instead, Carla lies for Sammy. He's like, no, he's not doing that. And like protects him in that. So you have to credit Sammy, who at that point is just trying to survive. Like, I think that that's fine. If he can get that done, I mean, it almost worked. Like he saw some real chaos there that actually could have come off. And I don't blame him for that. I just think for a lot of other people in the game, it's wild here that Jesse and Cody weren't being targeted, especially because Gabler said last episode, we need to do something about that. And it was like never brought up again. And he has this final three plan. And what is that final three plan? You know, like what is the plan other they haven't gone after Jesse and Cody when that's been what he's saying. And Jesse and Cody have already, especially Jesse, have put forward now some like kind of future little <laughs> fractures between like Carla and Cassidy that feel like they'll scupper any of those plans for Gabler. And he's already waited around. So I feel like it's crazy from everyone that they didn't come for Jesse and Cody in this episode, I probably blame Sammy the least because he's just in self-preservation mode and he actually achieved some stuff with this. But it is wild that he wouldn't go for Jesse in this, considering that is actually the truth. <laughs> like that is like Cassidy had like we've seen nothing against Carla, but like Jesse, while he's remained loyal to Carla, he's putting her name out there. They're always the swing. Like he's the one who has like had her fate in his hands or Coco's fate with Cassidy and like the split tribal every single time and has been genuinely, it seems weighing it up. And while he stayed loyal, he's been much more disloyal than Cassidy because he's really put them in a position where they're one side of the argument who could have gone home at any point. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the main thing from the episode is, is why, why isn't anybody going after Jesse? And, yes. you know, granted he has one idol that they don't know about, which is Janine's idol. And uh, if they knew about that idol, he becomes infinitely more threatening. Yes. However, you'd know that between him and Cody, he has at least one idol. Uh, you also know that like Cody's great at immunities. And that means that like, we're now coming into the final six. Those two are in lockstep seemingly. And they have at least one idol between them and Cody's great at immunities. Like, they're going to get really difficult to take out. And unless you feel really locked in uh, uh, on where you are in the boot order, um, like this is becoming really threatening. And it's wild to me that they're looking at somebody like Sammy um, as, as a potential target, even, even somebody like Cassidy over Cody and Jesse uh, who, who, you know, you don't know what kind of advantages or idols they might've found. Uh, especially now that Cody finds another one, you're like, maybe Cody has found two idols. Who knows? Like, maybe Jesse has not has one. Like, it's it's just, especially after Jesse very clearly orchestrated the previous vote, he said at Tribal, like, this is my move, essentially. Give me the money. Uh, like, I bring, it, bring it home. Uh, like, why is nobody talking about him? Are they talking about him? We're just not seeing it. Like, this is, again, more that I want to see from uh from the players because it it just seems so wild to me that nobody's looking at Jesse and credit to Jesse I think yeah uh for being in no, that spot yeah it's yeah it's phenomenal from Jesse and Cody that they aren't being looked at like this I mean there's so much future planning in the way that Jesse sees the game like he sees it like one two moves ahead so like last week he makes the move to take out Noel and I thought definitely go after Sammy next because otherwise like the three Barker boys could get together at any point. And it kind of feels like that's what Gabler would have wanted to do. He's reconnecting with Owen. Um, so if you kind of keep that, maintain some numbers. So he does that now. He takes out Sammy, which I think structurally was great for them. But then also is thinking about, well, then how do I win out next week? It's like, well, I'm going to put like fracture Carla and Cassidy. So he's doing that for the next vote. You know, he's, he's not just making moves for now. He's making it for two, three days ahead. And I think when you have that kind of forward thinking and planning and positioning, this is what comes of it. You know, like you, you're set up that well, you're that insulated and it's such a credit to his relationships, his connections. And also just, I guess how people are really scared of him because he's vulnerable here and no one is even talking about him. And we'll talk about probably, I'll probably criticize that for some other players because I think Jesse has to go in this episode. And I think that if Survivor is chess and the way we're looking at it, how don't Owen, Gabler, Sammy who's on the chopping block, Cassidy who's on the chopping block, um, how do they not all come you know, together against Jesse, who's such a clear threat. Um, 
and who they probably all need to start taking out some of these bigger threats like Carla, Cody, those people are immune or have implicit immunity, but Jesse. Um, and the fact that they don't probably also speaks to the fact that Survivor is in chess and there are these relationships here, but I think it also speaks to just how well Jesse has set himself up to this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there is, there's a line of reasoning that I can get behind to a degree that says, okay, Jesse and Cody are the people that I need in the game to get me to the end because I've talked to everyone and we all agree that once, as soon as we hit six, they're going back to back, right? Like they need to go. But they're not. They're the big targets. They have an idol. Ex <laughs> and that's so that the problem. About. Right. That's the, that's, and that's why yeah. I'm saying, even if you only know about one of them, you need to be concerned about that. Um, but the, for somebody like Gabler, I think, who's like, I've got a plan. It seems like that's maybe his plan that he's talked to Carla. He's now talked to Owen and he's probably talked to them both about like, so here's the plan. We're going to take out Cody and Jesse at six. Uh, and, um, and that's maybe why he feels so comfortable leaving them in the game, uh, for now, especially because he theoretically has a final three deal with them. So he's, he's not the one that gets, uh, you know, hit if, uh, if it fails. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't hate it completely from somebody like Gabler, if that's his reasoning. Um, but I just think it's so risky to leave mm. a player, leave a duo in like that, a duo, a, a two players who have at least one idol who are good enough at immunity challenges that they could you could easily see one of them winning uh one of one of them which which means that even if they didn't only have one idol they could protect the other with that idol if they needed to from what we've seen they've shown zero uh interest in turning on one another to this point uh which is incredibly dangerous um and for all you know maybe they do have more advantages or idols and if they do then they've basically locked themselves in to the final five or final four uh which it seems like they they basically have as long as they don't screw this up. So uh, that is that is the risk, and I think that that's why it's still not the right move. But I, if I'm trying to come up with with you know a good reason, a good enough reason for why it hasn't happened, I think that's the best I can do. I think it's, I mean, it's just way too risky because as you're saying, there's all of those threats, and I think like even if they take Jesse out now, I think that they still have a lot of warriors of taking out all the big threats and that they know like Cody and Carla do have idols and that they are challenge threats as well. So I like, I think that there's a lot of risk in that. I think if we start to look out from a broader perspective, just at like final tribal council and who should want to sit with each other. Now I know I'm looking from a bird's eye view and I could be wrong. And I think obviously it could not be as clear out there. And Sammy said in exits, like, you know, maybe he didn't see as much of Jesse's relationships with people and he didn't kind of realize some of that threat level, which again is, is a credit to any of those players and to Jesse for doing that. Um, but if you look at it, like I think of these seven, Sammy has played an imp impressive game in the past, but flip flops. Some people don't respect that. Gabler has been a bit of a wild card. He has a, some perception issues that he needs to fix probably for the jury. Owen has been the underdog. You can probably speak to how to, out of the loop he's been. And Cassidy has been very consistent, but not as flashy, not driving things as much. And you could maybe speak to some bigger things that you've done. If, if I'm those four, I'm thinking, here's these are the people I want to sit with. I mean, Kyla, they, they talk about her as a big threat. She has an idol. She's won I mean, now, now two challenges. Um, she seems like a big threat to me. Jesse and Cody, we see them and we see the way that they've controlled it. If they have that bird's eye view, surely you want to sit with two of those other three people. And if you take out Sammy now for me, that's, that's like a pretty good, good person that you might want to sit with. So if I look at it from like Owen, Gabler, Cassidy's perspective, I think you're like, you're kind of wasting around when it's going to already be so tough to get to a final three, you know, without the Kylas and Jesse's and Cody's of the world, considering there's also fire. Like you can't even just get, you know, say we'll take them out at four after idols are done, or, you know, like they could win a challenge. And then also there's fire. So they're taking it like way to who they can sit next to to beat. And I like that everyone has that clarity and I do love that. But I think especially for Owen being immune here, like I can see Gabler and Sammy and Cassidy just being so scared in this claustrophobic vote and wanting to just like, again, prioritize self-preservation. But like Owen had immunity. I feel like this is the time to be like, where's my big move? Like, where's my resume yeah. point and who am I sitting next to? And to really go for Jesse, it does necessitate perfect knowledge. I understand that. And even I might be wrong in how I'm, I'm subjectively reading the jury, but that's how it kind of feels from a jury standpoint to me. And I'm surprised that they would take out 
Sammy in that, or even like go for someone like Cassidy when it feels like there are bigger jury threats on the board and one of them was vulnerable in this round. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, this is not fun. <laughs> it's not fun for Owen. <laughs> Poor um, Owen. Poor I, I completely agree. And and that's the thing. I, I, I think that the, the primary people I'm looking at when it comes to uh, like, what are you thinking? You should be taking out Jesse um, is, is first of all, Carla, uh, who I think is making the biggest mistake by not taking a shot at Jesse. Uh, and then on top of that, taking a shot at Cassidy, which is like, okay, you're not doing the good move. You're also not doing the neutral move. You're doing, okay, you're doing the bad move. Okay, that's not great. Um, Cassidy also uh, obviously needs to go along with this to to survive here. So I can sort of understand why she might go in that direction. But for Cassidy, you also probably want Jesse gone. Um, and, uh, and for Owen, um, who... I was watching this episode live on Twitch and the second Jesse approached Owen and said, so everyone's thinking Cassidy, but I literally said out loud, Owen, this is it. This is your opportunity. You've been waiting for an opportunity to take control of this game. Jesse just handed it to you. Uh, you can take this information and flip this on Jesse and take control of this game if you want. Um, and he doesn't, which I don't like for his game because I feel like it's too risky a path to leave both Carla and Cassidy and Jesse and Cody in the game. You can say all you want that Cassidy and, and Carla might not trust each other anymore. That may or may not be true moving forward. You can say that Cody and uh, and Jesse might turn on each other, but those are relationships that at the end of the day that you just don't have a lot of control over. Um, and leaving them both in the game leaves you vulnerable to to a duo e situation, which is just not a great place to be in Survivor. I'd prefer to take control of my own fate uh, at this point in the game, knowing that this might be my only chance to make a move that is solely mine. Um, it's possible that he decided, you know what, I can hold on to this information and use it next round and take control next round, and maybe that would be a little better, uh, and he may still do that, but I, I think that's a riskier play and the opportunity might not come as and we know it probably won't given that all of these idols exist. Uh, and so I did kind of feel like this this was his shot that he was he was kind of like, ah, I've, I've been on the outside of every vote. I haven't had an opportunity to do anything. And I was like, but Owen, oh, this was your chance. Uh, why didn't you take it? And you're immune now. Like we've seen players exactly. who are empowered to make moves when they are immune. Like next week, you might be more worried for your own safety. So yeah, I mean, it really does feel like a huge missed opportunity for Owen. For Carla, I think I'm more okay with it. I mean, obviously she wasn't, She like I'm okay with her taking out Sam Sammy. My issue is that she was trying to take out Cassidy. <laughs> right. I don't like that. Um, and If she was taking out Sammy, like I get that. Like she can maybe have the shield of someone like Jesse and Cody. She could maybe march her way down there and maybe even beat them. You know, she's a very impressive player in her own right. And she has, but so like last week we were talking about it, like, should she come for Jesse now? And I, and I weighed it up, you know, either way, like, does she want the shield and to try one out a little later and then have the trink to get, which is like a small length, you know, through from like six and five, or does she want, you know, to, to come from now and then just have a rockier road? I think that this was probably worst case scenario in which like there she like maybe lost an ally in Cassidy. Um, and like also like she like kind of leaves them in the game. But I think like I would have been okay if she'd just gone for Sammy and then next time been like me and Cassidy, Gable and Owen, like let's try split on these guys, not knowing that they have two idols and trying to make something happen there with like the knowledge that she has. So I was okay with her of all people who need shields maintaining it. Um, but yeah, Sammy wasn't even necessarily her move and that wasn't the way she was going. So I definitely disagree, um, with Cassidy, but I, I think it's just, um, it's those people kind of on where I see more on like the bottom of final tribal council chances. And I'm like, Sammy seems like he was kind of beatable. Um, and then you've yeah. kind of, like taken up a round to take him out. Yeah. And, and I will say also, uh, something worth noting is that I, I think something that I've noticed through the season is that. Uh, the condensed schedule, especially with a long immunity yeah. challenge, mm -hmm. it's totally yeah. possible that Owen might have wanted to do something, but was like, there's yeah. not enough mm -hmm. time to flip yeah. this vote around uh, in the way that I would want to on Jesse. So I have to go along with it this time and then make my move next time. But but uh, but oh, and that means you'd better make the move next time. Yeah, make, <laughs> so, make it you better use the information because he gave you everything. Yeah, he I gave know, you his I whole know. game plan. If you go to Cassidy and Carla and say, look, this entire thing was designed to separate the two of you. 
uh, then you've just created a voting block of three in a six person game. Uh, and, 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 you know, you can do something with that. So, um, you know, who knows? We'll see. Uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do want to talk about the, uh, advantage uh, yes. hunt. Yes. <laughs> because this was unbelievable watching it. Literally unbelievable. I, I still in my head, I, I'm thinking, <laughs> was this a reshoot? Like, did they refilm this to make it more dramatic no. to, to visualize the the the, the general so. sense of they walked right because it was incredible to me how often and the exact same shot that people would come in and out walking right by it looking straight at it doing nothing with it it was incredible yeah i think a big thing they were like it was kind of the same color as a tree and i was like i guess like they were just kind of like their eyes are kind of blurred yeah seeing it except it felt like for the any big of them line just, like, of color that like, wasn't the same color yeah. as the tree i agree i i i look i agree with you i'm not trying to defend this i'm not i'm really not uh yeah it was wild it was, it was actually it was actually crazy uh and what did you but what did you think of the advantage as well i i don't mind the concept uh, but when Cody then reveals it at the immunity challenge and Jeff says, you won't find out until after the votes are, uh, cast. I was like, oh, yes. so it's just immunity. Right. Can I defend this? Cause my hot take is I like it better there. Really? Okay. Well, I feel like we didn't get to see this actually play out. Like, it feels like it should just be implicit immunity. It's like, well, he could be immune, but there's a few reasons I feel like we didn't get to see how it might not be so comprehensive otherwise. So firstly, when two people won, it became a one in three chance. That's way scary. Mm -hmm. If it had been one in six, I mean, that's only the same as shot in the dark. And like, look how perturbed people seem by shot in the dark, like not really that much at all. So like maybe if it was one in six, this is also, I think like a very even challenge field where like you could kind of believe any of them would win. What if like another person who was like a huge underdog would Cody then have implicit immunity? No, but he would have to maybe play it up to play up that fear factor. So I think while it's obviously more powerful this way, you also have like more strategic options. And I love when things are more strategic. I also think like Owen was such a conventional choice, probably the person I would have bet on at that time um, where like, Obviously, he has a lot to play for. He's a super fan. He knows like all these challenges are tree male. He's probably done some research into how to do a challenge like this. And he's athletic. So he's such a conventional choice that it's like easy to believe that Cody did bet that way. And also like Cody is not at all an option to go home anyway. Like Jesse was vulnerable and his name was mentioned as much as Cody. So I feel like had Sammy bet on Gabler and just... Owen had won you know like you know what I'm saying like if it had if it had been one person who only one person had won the challenge someone who was more at risk and they only had a one in six chance and maybe someone who was less conventional won the challenge in like a less even playing field maybe we would see then that person try to be like well you never know and like try to play it up strategically the implicit immunity I don't, I don't think it's as definite necessarily as people think but I think like it got ruined in a couple of different ways from we are seeing like it's true strategic potential well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's basically like a guaranteed shot in the dark where you don't have to give up your vote. Um, and yeah, and that's, well, that's that's the thing. It's it's still not a and great you get to like, choose which person. Right. So it's like, OK, so I not only have to worry about an idol that I know Cody has, but let's let's assume it's a player that doesn't already have an idol. Um, but they you always have to yeah. assume they might. Uh, then like, okay, now I really have to like split votes here at final seven, because what if, what if we're wrong? What if he did pick the right person? Uh, what if he did happen to pick this person? Uh, or he has an, like, okay, so is, why don't we just, why don't we just ignore him for now and focus on another? Why don't we just do Jesse first? Like, that's kind of, that's what an idol does most of the time anyway. Like yeah. if you hold an idol, you're probably not catching votes because they're not going to bother with you unless they're able to split votes, they're probably just going to go after somebody close to you instead. Uh, and this is basically just that for one round guaranteed one in six chance that because not because an idol itself is like, well, they might not play it if we're tricky enough. Yeah, but this is just guaranteed mm -hmm. yeah. one in six shot. Good point. Uh, and and they can play up like. Yes. What did he just? Did he just yeah, this bump when they won. Ah, oh, what are we really gonna risk this at final? We're gonna risk our entire game at final seven on a one and six shot. I'm just gonna do somebody else. I'm just gonna do somebody else. 
Yeah, but no one cares about one in six when it's shot in the dark. I mean, the fact that he would have to play it up usually is what, what I think is fun about this. Like, you know, the fact that he would have to, and then there are ways that he, you can play it. Like you can bet on someone in, a, again, a less even challenge field, but someone who's maybe like a less sure pick knowing that, okay, like if someone like Owen wins, like that's a sort of immunity anyway, because he's someone you'd think that he would guess. And then maybe you pick someone else who could give you safety in another way. Like there's ways to kind of hedge your bets. I just think it gives like more strategic potential to reveal it in the idle spot. Like if it's just at the challenge, then it's just a straight bet, which is interesting, but it's not strategic. It's just like literally betting on a person. I do, I do see where you're coming from. Uh, I think the difference between this and shot in the dark is that um, shot in the dark is an indefinite threat looming over your head. Uh, that like you can be like, well, they might play shot in the dark or they might not. And if they don't, then they'll have yeah. it again next time. So we can't just indefinitely not vote for them. But this yeah. is one where it's just mm -hmm. like, if we just ignore this one for this round, it'll guaranteed be over next time. So let's just ignore it for now and then deal with it next time uh, is, yeah. is how I would approach it if I were in the game. I mean, I totally get where you're coming from. I'm not saying it's perfect. I enjoyed it as like a fun little episodic thing that doesn't break the game. I don't think we saw its full potential because they allowed the tie, because it was Cody, because mm -hmm. Owen won, it was bet on. Like, I think there are all these ways where like the most overpowered and then conventional things happen like at every turn to make it like really, truly safe. And it could have played out in more interesting ways otherwise. I totally get where you're coming from though. I do think like, what if they made it a beware advantage and it says beware on it? And then you bet on like, like I think one in six is a little crazy. So maybe you get two picks for the challenge. So technically like one in three, but you also like have a better chance because you're actively betting on them. You should make a good bet. But then if you don't get it right, you will lose your vote. And then there's some stakes to it. And then I also think like, then you can't necessarily use it as implicit immunity because you might need to tell some allies whether you have a vote or not. Like your vote might be mm -hmm. important. So it might cover you a little less. You can try play it up. Or you might be like, I I'm the only one who knows I don't have a vote. I think maybe that would make it a little more interesting. But I think, you know, trying it out, I thought it was it was quite fun. Um, the straight shot, if revealing it of the challenge, is just a little simplistic for me. So I like that it there was more there could be more strategy to it here. But I think it'll be it'll be where advantage would make you know a little bit more sense maybe. Yeah. All right. So you you said uh, you're Cody. Who who are you placing your bet on? Definitely Owen. Yeah, I think that was a great bet. I, I chose uh, Carlo as my pick, so we were both right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the, the thing is, like, you would choose either of them for very similar reasons. Like, they're both people who have won challenges, who are strong in these challenges, and who are super fat. He's a little hungrier for it. Like, he's been on the bottom this whole time, and I feel like he has more to play for, and that's why I would choose Owen. I felt, I feel like, uh, I felt, I chose Carla because I felt like she was the most mentally tough player out there like I've seen her injure her mm. finger and then climb up a rope like uh like she can withstand pain <laughs> yeah. and this is that's what this challenge yeah. is about right so that's like I was like I feel like she could do it uh but I also thought Gabler would do well and that didn't turn that didn't pan out very well uh, yeah that's so. the thing it's like it's so it's such an even field like I I think that this cha mm -hmm. this challenge well this advantage w would work in different ways if you like pretty much anyone who wins like yeah that could have been a fine bet now it makes it scary to vote for them whereas like in another world where like someone comes from behind and wins in some spectacular way, they might be like, they'd never bet on that person. And maybe you did because you thought that they'd never bet on them. You know what I'm saying? So like you take the implicit immunity and then you also take like the safety someone else can provide for you. But this is just a very even challenge field. And the I kind of challenge, I feel like anyone could have done well in because they've all, we, we've seen so many different people win immunity. Like they've all exhibited that strength. Um, but what did you think? Like, let's, let's get to it. Cause I loved Rob Ranty about this on Know It Alls about them allowing the tie to happen in the challenge like i've seen this very very split yeah this is this is weird to me because i I feel like i've seen a lot of discussion about it where people are like well, what what would they should they have done they couldn't just leave them out there safety reasons and like what like like what what could they have done and and i feel like the answer is obvious like there's precedent for this for yeah. long and long endurance challenges okay. you just increase the stakes like you make it harder uh like at some point you just say all right dunk your heads down totally it's agree. a holding your breath challenge first one up loses Completely i feel like that's agree. it i feel like that's that's I the mean, easy the answer fact that it's been put into this dichotomy yeah yeah like it's been put into this like duality where it's either you go to a tie 
or you leave them out there till one of them drowns. Like that is not the duality that we've been left with. Like definitely there's a middle ground. I agree. Hold your breath. Let's see who let's see who comes like go to get under the water and let's see who comes out first. Like there's a, they should have thought of this probably a little earlier. Like maybe lower the grates if you can. Like there's so many like, we've done this before. Like they said it on know it alls, you know, like one hand behind your back. These things have all been done. Like we have ways to deal with challenges that are going too long that aren't leaving them out there for Tom and Ian levels. Like we we have ways where to make it a little harder and then someone leaves. That's what we do mm-hmm. in these challenges. Yeah. And, and like, the, so, yeah. that's not ideal <laughs> for me. Like, it's not my favorite thing when they change the challenge. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, it's better than giving two people immunity, which which is, I think, a worse, uh, worse thing to happen here, especially at the final seven, especially knowing that you have a potential third immunity coming into play. Uh, like, all right, like, let's chill. I, the the only reason why I, I was even a little bit uh, accepting of this is because I, I did f- kind of feel like, all right, you guys broke the challenge. <laughs> like, you guys really just, like, you beat the challenge, so we're going to reward you for that. Like, I can understand that line of thought, uh, but, like, uh, I think you have to approach it from the game balance uh, point of view and and I think it just doesn't work to give two people immunity here when you weren't planning to especially when there's a third person getting immunity I totally agree like they um they made it this like special event challenge uh where like they both yeah, yeah like they beat the ocean and Jeff was saying you know oh this is when we used to make it really hard on the players I'm like that goes against everything you've ever said about the new era but I guess I know he's taught like he like the, the what he was saying I don't know if you have any of these like sound bites but he was saying I do like, we, we could lose someone. Do you have that one? Uh, not that one, but I have when they kick in the uh, the music here. This old school survivor. Back when we inflicted a little more pain. Nice to revisit some of our old haunts. It's a cool moment. It's a cool moment with the with the music coming in. Uh, I liked it. I know, but it just is doesn't make sense based on everything he said in the last year and a half but i know yeah uh, yeah yeah, no i mean i liked when he was like we could lose someone here and i'm like from life or from the game um but so they made it like a bit of an event but yeah from a game perspective it made cody's advantage double as powerful way overpowered i don't think we got to see the way that that could have played out more maybe more organically or more interestingly um it did make for a potential advantage get in or even a broken game because if Sammy shot in the dark hits, I know this is like not a lot, but we have three immunities already, three idols, and now three people are immune and then one person can play shot in the dark. So the game is technically mm-hmm. broken and an advantage get in could definitely be possible. Um, and yeah, I just feel like they're making up a lot of new rules this season. Like you can swap rewards and now people tie. Like that's not really how the game that I know when they used to make it harder on the players apparently um, used to be played. So yeah, I don't think that they should have left them out there to die. I just think that they, before that, could have got them to do any tiebreaker in the water that could have solved this in a better way yeah uh impressive stuff though yeah no i mean it was amazing like i mean it's it's a scary thing to watch i tweeted this out but they've done it recently on australian survivor twice and the first time they did it there was like a news article that was like viewers hit out at torture challenge like it genuinely made the news and then australian survivor was like oh yeah and then the next season they just went right back and did it again um so I kind of like it. We have seen it more recently in International Survivor. It's for me a terrifying challenge that I would never want to do. I'm claustrophobic sometimes anyway. So uh, I, I'd be dead probably, but incredibly impressive from both Carla and Owen. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, three people immune, four people vulnerable, three idols in play. Um, there's a lot going on here. Uh, that's when we hear from Carla that, uh, that's, you know, Sammy wants Cassidy, Cassidy wants Sammy and, and she kind of feels like she wants Cassidy. And then Jesse comes back with, I wanted Cassidy to split up Cassidy and Carla, but if Carla wants Cassidy out, then I don't need to take Cassidy out because they're already at each other's throats, which means I can take out Sammy, who is uh, a threat. Uh, he's a threat for a couple of reasons. And Sammy is a threat for, you know, other reasons. Sammy's like this amazing fire magician. And nobody trusts him. He's kind of flip-floppy, wishy-washy. A flip-floppy, wishy-washy fire magician. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Uh, and we found out now that Sammy's really, really good at fire, just in time for it to be super relevant. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love this thinking from Jesse. I think it makes so much sense. Cody later is saying we want to split up Kyler and Cassidy. I'm like, they've been split. They split themselves. Like you're voting out 
Cassidy as a proxy to Kala. And it feels like that situation has already resolved itself. So I love the way that Jeffy, again, like looks at it, like, what are we coming back to? Are we coming back to, we vote out Cassidy, Kala and Sammy, like Kala's promising Sammy next, but I see that they're reconnecting and he's right about it. Then you've got Owen who's wanting to pull in Gabler. I know we both have our idols, but every chance they go against us next time. And for Cody, who, as far as we know, and maybe we'll see it in a flashback next week, as far as we know, doesn't know Jesse has an idol. He should be very worried about this structurally, that they could split on the two of them and Jesse could go home for that at six next week. So he should be really worried about, I think, the structure. Like we've talked about this, I think, a lot this season, that it's much more about structures and individual threats. We're weighing up like Cassidy or Ryan, as an example. We're weighing up yeah, Cassidy or Sammy. They both have things that are threatening about them. For me, it's just like what groups you come back to and coming back to this kind of divided Carla Cassidy drama that you can really mine and make that the focus. And if they're coming against each other and you just have to choose between them, that would be best case scenario rather than everyone coming back and finally looking at you. Yeah, I I love this play from Jesse. It's, it's something that I feel like is not done often enough that, you know, it, it's it's this concept of, okay... This person's a big threat. So everyone knows there's a big, they're a big threat and we should take them out. It's being able to go a one step further and, and, and thinking, wait a minute. If everyone knows they're a big threat, maybe they're not such a big threat. Like think about what they actually have um, and, and go from there. Like if everyone thinks Jesse is a big threat, it's because he is. Because he's got Cody and he's got Cody's idol and he's got another idol, but they don't know about that. Uh, and he's got connections and he's been running the game. Okay, he's a threat for real reasons w versus like Cassidy is a big threat. Why is Cassidy a threat? Well, she's survived a few rounds. She's likable. Uh, people like her and she's with Carla and she's connected to Carla. Uh, it's like, okay, Carla wants her out. Everybody wants her out. Okay, all of the reasons I thought she was threatening seem to be breaking down in now that she's leaving, which tells me that somebody's selling a story, right? Either selling a story or just making a mistake. Uh, and so I love that Jesse's able to see through that. I think coming up with this alternative plan is a great idea. My only issue with it is that he, uh, to my eyes, was a little too transparent about it with Owen and gave Owen the opportunity to flip it around on him. If I'm Jesse... I would want to approach Owen saying, "So Cass, so uh, so Carla wants Cassidy, but I I'm kind of feeling like like Sammy's the bigger threat, don't you think? With the fire and stuff, like why don't we do this? And and ideally, I want Owen to come up with the idea of like, oh, and if we leave Carla out of it, how does Cassidy feel about that? Oh, and that's a brilliant idea." Right. Like I want I, I don't want Owen to think that I'm coming up with this and I don't want Owen to have ammunition to go to Carla to think I came up with this. Um, I want I want plausible deniability where I can go to Carla and say, I planned to bring it to you. But when I talked to Owen, he didn't want to. Right. Or something along those lines. Uh, I, I just feel like he gave he gave Owen the keys to the car there. Luckily, Owen didn't drive away with it, but he still could. Um Still, though, small mistake, especially if he if it was just a read that he had that he could trust that Owen wouldn't do it and it, and it was a right read. Yeah. Definitely possible that he's reading just like that Owen just wants like a soft, sweet, nice warm bed for the night where he can vote correctly. And he's giving mm -hmm. him kind of that refuge and really bringing Owen in, um, being in something long term that might make Owen, you know, loyal to him. Because as much as he's giving Owen ammunition, he's also him in and possibly connecting with him for next week to go forward like that. I think as well, we maybe do have to look at the timing and that's such a big, such a big thing as we're saying with the season, you know, they didn't expect to go in the challenge that long. We know that it's been so quick anyway. So then to even come up with what is like quite an intricate plan and try to put that in motion, let alone like letting other people's like approach really kind of meet yours. Like maybe we don't have time for like Owen to get to that brainwave. Like you just kind of have to put it out there now. Um, I, like my one thing with it, and this is why I assumed Carla voted for Sammy. Sammy saying it happened because um, of shot in the dark I thought love it strategically starving setting up for next week the issue is I just just because Carla has an idol I'd be worried to spook someone with an idol now it might go okay next week where you can put votes on Cassidy and Carla they're voting for each other flush her idol and then take her out at five but I would just be a little worried I know they talked about this on know it of spooking an ally and a powerful ally who has some ammunition possibly against you um even if you could maybe make it work but then I guess uh 
now they can't now it seems like he will go back to Cassidy and say she was intending to do it um but I'm not sure I mean maybe she was really set off by shot in the dark that is a possibility so then she basically well, was left out of the boat I just I just thought of this too uh is it possible that she was just casting what she thought was potentially a sympathy vote like is it like uh we, we know that she essentially knew that James was leaving uh when he left and she um you know doesn't warn him ahead of time uh i i don't she did the vote him out didn't she or did she, she not? i don't out, remember yeah. now she, she, she did, did vote she him out okay so yeah. so maybe not maybe maybe that wouldn't be like in her playbook then um but it's it's possible that she was like okay i've got all the votes on cassidy and now i'm gonna vote the other way just to like uh you know play it up but they, yeah. i don't know that doesn't that doesn't really ring true to me it's just an idea it's just so weird to me that Sammy says it was because of Shot in the Dark because she seems so rattled when he said he would play Shot in the Dark. Now, if you're voting for Cassidy and Sammy says it, I guess you're like, okay, jerk. Like, thank you for, you know, um, not voting as you said you would in this plan. But like, we don't need your vote. So if he says it, you're like, all right, well, we're not voting for you. Like, play your Shot in the Dark in the last time all you want. Like, it doesn't really concern me. Maybe the way, like, she's either rattled because she, they're all voting for Sammy or she's rattled because she she's smart enough to know why would Sammy be worried enough to like, like break the social contract while he must really think he's in trouble. Oh, he must actually be in trouble. Oh, that means I'm not in the vote. I'm going to change my vote. We'll find out in the first 30 seconds of the next episode, but I'm not super sure. Ha and like Sammy, Sammy said it was that. Had it been Jesse going to Carla, I think there'd be merit. You know, I, I would understand that in terms of not leaving an ally out. And like anyway, at whatever point of this she was, she was filled in, I think she's going to be pretty furious because it either if it is a tribal and she was left out and she literally just read it, that's going to be a very hard one for her to take. Even if he eventually comes to her, it would be so last minute. We saw how put off she was by like Sammy's timing in the James vote. Um, she didn't like that Sammy had even been the target to begin with when Jesse brought it up with her to begin with. So like she could really be put off by that. So I think there are going to be fireworks coming back from this in the fact that Carla either didn't know or barely knew and wasn't included enough. So I think that there will be like, I think this has already probably set off many alarm bells. If like if I if I were in this situation, uh, if I were on the island, my uh, granted, I'd probably I'd know less about Gabler. But my guess would be that Gabler told her. Right. Like my yeah, guess well, would yeah, be that knowing true. knowing what I know about Gabler and, and what he mm -hmm. wants to do, it would make sense for him to yes. go to Carla last minute. And I think we've heard that he's done this before, too where he's gone yeah. to people last minute oh, and been like, Janine. hey, this is where the vote. right. This is where yeah. the vote is going. Um, and so she's able to flip. And now because why would Gabler want to blindside Carla when he's wanting to work with Carla and Owen to take out Jesse and Cody, theoretically? Yeah. Um, so in my eyes, like that's that would be the most likely option. But but at the same time, like, why why wouldn't we at least see it here? Maybe we'll get a flashback. But uh, that that's probably my my we'll get best. A flashback guess i because i the the, yeah. the reading it based on the the shot in the dark i think it's it's possible but it's less likely to me than than somebody told her right i mean if gabler did that i think that that's like a huge credit to him you I know mean, i think that that would be the right mm. move because the worst thing that could happen to him is he's like i've got this final three plan then jesse comes through and is like but before we get there here's this carla cassidy drama that i'm like brewing up right now and that's probably not part of his plan so if he's trying to like get everyone on the same page it's a worse move than just taking jesse out now i feel but at least he's like trying to get something together for next week so i'm, I'm not going to give it like you know in the stopwatch and the cheesy points i'm not going to reward that this week because it's a fan fiction mm -hmm. but if it turns out to be true it's something i would be considering for the future because i think that that's probably what he should have done i mean for everyone else again like it, it's not even just not in targeting jesse like for everyone else like it's really just jesse and cody really running things um as this like amazing pair and having like their cake and eating it too in terms of like causing this drama uh and just like setting themselves up well to not be the target next time so getting on the same page against them should be what everyone is wanting to do and it seems it's at this time that we don't know that anyone has tried to do that so if gabler did that's something that i would theoretically like but it is not like it's not anything that we've seen so that was yeah. what makes it hard wish this was big uh, brother then we'd know yes <laughs> well uh <laughs> you know this this reminds me of uh, a good analogy that the um... thing about time oh no don't <laughs> Don't do it. Because I can't do believe it. he like like literally he just kicked it off with you know I was thinking about you guys this afternoon and I was, I was, I was thinking about, <laughs> about tides.
Uh, and it was almost like they knew about the criticism and were just like, uh, like, let's just leave. But this was films. This was filmed ages ago. Um, it's a giant I, middle here's, can get you a here's the thing, though. I actually, this was actually, in my opinion, one of Jeff's better analogies. Um, no. That, uh, he, is, he started bad with uh, the, the thing about tides is that they just constantly change uh which was terrible but his thing about just surviving the high tide uh i think was 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 okay because that's how i see survivor in the modern era right now is that uh survivor is all about surviving just those peak moments of danger uh because it's so easy to slip back into safety uh and and with how swiftly things change um so uh I, I, look uh jeff Stop it with the analogies, even if this one was okay for me. Stop it. And they were like, that was really good. I would love someone to be like, Jeff, that was that made no sense. Like, don't like, even if it was a better one, just like I don't I don't actually think the game's like that at all. You, you haven't played it. It's actually really different to that. So and then they took the tide thing through the whole tribal council. I think I had in my note, oh, this is going through the whole tribal council. This is the theme now. And it was like again, like something that they could really rely on. Like Jeff asked you a question about your game, and you're like, it's like the tide, and you have to say nothing important to him. And he's like, very good point. I agree. And then you can move on to the next thing. So they were all like, amazing that I can rely on this like analogy that he set up for us. That he's yeah, just offering yeah. himself. No more asking, how is the game like surfing? How is the game like heart surgery? Jeff's like, I've got the analogy. I'm going to tell you <laughs> what I think it is. So please stop, Jeff. Please. We beg you for one analogy free episode. Just one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the, we got we got something that was actually interesting at Tribal, which is that Sammy is going to announce that he's going to play his shot in the dark. Um, I liked this. I feel like you should absolutely consider announcing playing shot in the dark because there's more value to it when people know it's going to happen than playing it randomly. Because playing it playing it randomly without anybody knowing it's coming gives you a one in six chance of surviving the vote. So if you play it and they don't see it coming and you're like, haha, I played my shot in the dark and you didn't know I was going to do it. Um, like, great. Now you have a five and six chance of it not working and nothing changes. Or you can announce that you're going to do it. And hey, maybe it spooks people into not voting for you because they are afraid of the one in six chance. Maybe they want to just ignore you for a round and focus on somebody else. It's possible that it scares people off of you i think waiting until the last second at the end of tribal is probably not the time where it's going to make much of a difference but uh but i'm all, i i i'm i was a fan of this i i i think why not throw it against the wall i i think especially if you are if you know and are correct that all votes are coming for you anyway why not you might get a couple of rogue votes thrown somewhere else and then who knows I totally agree. I, it's like what we used to talk about with the 50-50 coin. Like you can have your 50% chance or you can make your own odds by scaring people about the fact that like this might work and then people are too scared to vote for you. It's kind of like that implicit immunity about just like the fear of that. And I think that that it is good to tell people to increase those odds. Definitely for sure. I mean, I think it was a really good read that he needed it. He talked about that in Exit. So that's the first thing. Also like made a lot of sense that even if he didn't need it, yes, you're going against the social contract, but your vote shouldn't really matter. And you have a lot of reason to believe that they'd be coming for you and he's in total survival mode so i totally get playing it and i actually liked the timing in terms of when he told people because the thing is like you want to spook people enough to maybe throw enough votes a different way to make some mistakes so that someone goes home but you don't want it to be early enough that then they just make a plan to split one vote like it's they, they, that's like, sure. a very, like okay well just one person you split um it doesn't change anything from what we see unless it did change Carla. Do you feel like Cassidy should be throwing her vote here? Because only three other vulnerable people being Cassidy, Jesse, and Gabler. She had seemed worried. I don't know if she knows like kind of how if they go to the zero vote revote if it hits. Cassidy's probably going home there. She's been the other option. She she might not know how much trouble she's in, but like it's probably not gonna be Jesse. It's probably not gonna be Gabler. Um obviously not a great social thing in the social contract to probably throw a vote to Gabler, not Jesse. I feel like you can come back and just Gabler and you can profusely apologize and just be like, I was so scared. I mean, I see it both ways. And I feel like we weigh this up all the time in terms of like the trust you lose versus like who wants to go out on that one in six hitting. Um, so I definitely see it both ways, but it would really suck to go out because someone hit a one in six chance when shot in the dark. 
Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably why I think it's a good move to call out that you're using the shot in the dark because I am throwing a vote like every time. Right. Uh, right. Every, yeah. If, if every I'm time. expecting, if, if especially like, if especially if I know that I was the other option, uh, that like you know that I'm the person that that Sammy might have written my name yeah. down. Now he's not writing my name down, but he might be immune, which and means the if, yeah, exactly. On the revote, it's probably me if everyone votes for Sammy or somebody might already just throw one vote my way. So I'm absolutely throwing a vote out um, and uh, I'll, I'll then either deny it or just be like, yeah, sorry. Like, what do you want me yeah, to do? Yeah, sorry. Like, I mean, denying day, it might be I, tough as we've seen. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 certainly. Um, but like I I truly think that Survivor is a a, a, a an apolo don't ask first, just apologize later. Like uh, you just do yeah. the thing and then you hope it works out. And and that's the thing too with, with Sammy. Like they can be as mad as they want that he's gonna play shot in the dark. But like if I'm Sammy and they're like, oh, I can't believe you would play shot in the dark. And then they yeah, all they really vote for that. me. I'm like, screw you. Like, you guys were worse than me. Like, what do you want from me? I know. The audacity that they all try to shame him. Like, how could you do that? And they're all voting for him. Like, good on him, I think, for playing the shot in the dark for that. I just think for someone like Cassidy, it just looks very weak. That you've, like, five out of six chance, you just, like, like you, you played right into Sammy's trap. It's not a great perception. Like, probably worse for your long-term game. But, like, you got to survive the night. And there's only three other people that are available to vote for. That makes it like particularly scary. I would I would have been scared. I think it would have been a real 50-50 for me on whether to play that shot in the dark. And because like that's why Sammy would do that timing, because it could really scare someone to doing that and maybe some chaos is so I mean it was it was a last ditch attempt, Look, but here's what know. I'm doing. I'm throwing a vote on Jesse. I'm throwing a vote on Jesse and I and then I'm gonna deny it. I'm I'm gonna try and make this guy who's in power Taren, as paranoid what as possible. Just see? What did we just about deny? I don't care. I mean, Cassidy but, no, but here's why Sammy's before. Sammy's didn't work because it was an orchestrated plan that he wasn't in yeah, on and he voted the way enough. he was supposed to. But if I'm yeah. casting a random vote, uh, especially true. if I'm Cassidy, somebody that they probably wouldn't expect to cast a random vote because I've already gotten away with it once. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yeah. I'm absolutely yeah. throwing my vote there. I totally get that. I mean, I think what we've saying we're saying about lying about the votes, it's very dicey anyway, but like chaos is your friend. So I guess in that chaotic moment, it's like it could have been anyone. Not like, oh, Sammy's saying it was Gabler, but Jesse had like teed it up with Gabler, like he knows what's going on in those numbers. I do think it's hard to do in seven people. You're probably gonna find that mm -hmm. culprit. It's not that difficult. It's probably someone who was vulnerable already. It's not Jesse. So it looks like it's one of Gabler or Cassidy. Sammy didn't have a vote. So yeah, I mean like doing that to Jesse, I think that would be like an act of war. That, I mean, but like throwing a vote to Gabler, I feel like what's Gabler gonna do? Who cares? You know, sorry, Gabler, I was scared. It worked out. You need, we, you need you. I really didn't want to go. Well, my my thing about going uh, throwing the vote on Jesse is that I feel like it doesn't look weak. It doesn't look like self preservation. It looks like you did take a big shot. Uh, that like if it had landed, like kudos. Um, and then uh, I also think that like. Jesse being in the position of power that he is, is the the kind of player that would start to like get concerned that his power was not holding in the way that he thought it was, uh, where he's like, oh, wait a minute. I, it's, it, it probably was Cass. But what if it was like Cody? Like, what if it was somebody who thought like this is a good way to just snipe somebody out? Uh, and it's at, at worst, hopefully just going to make him question his relationships and his power structure. Yeah, uh, I just think that that's a very aggressive move. But I mean, I would have yeah. thrown on Gabler. Oh, may maybe. I don't know. Either way, something could have been done there for sure. I want to ask you a question and it's like so theoretical. But mm -hmm. so everyone's been talking about this this week and it didn't pan out. And like Cody was basically immune as we've spoken about. But like a lot of people are talking about how Jesse should be targeting Cody to get both idols and be safe at six and five. So you don't need to target him for it. Well, like if you're going like to steal if, his idol, just steal his idol. Well, I mean, just like then if you vote him out at seven, you have two idols and you can play Cody's one at six and then your secret one at five and then you're in through to four. And yeah, a lot of people like don't, Jesse have you, to do that. Right. But if you don't vote him out at seven, you still are holding two idols and you still can play your idol at six and five. He's right, just still then, in the game. He can't take it back from you unless you give it to him. 
Yeah, but that's not how like human relationships work. You know, like they're working together. The odds of you saying to Cody, like, I'm not giving it back to you and letting that blow up. You just vote him out instead. Like it's, you're still betraying him one way or the other. I guess. I mean, I think like like, for me, you make a choice. Like you either like are not working with him so you vote him out or you give him his idol. Like the idea that you would keep him in, but like be so not working with him that you would steal his idol right in front of his face to me. Like, I can't even imagine how the drama of that would work. But like, if he, so if he takes him out at seven, he's got two idols. And like, everyone was saying like, Jesse has to do this. Obviously it wasn't a consideration. Uh, yeah. I mean, how do you think that he should be approaching this whole Cody's idol and two idols thing? I don't, I don't think that should like, maybe you could you could make an argument that you know maybe Jesse needs to take Cody out at some point which I don't even agree with in the first place I think that Jesse probably beats Cody in a final three uh situation anyways I don't think he needs to take him out at all um yeah but again it's like okay why don't you just keep him in at seven and then if you need to play your idol at six then you play your idol at six and you say oh yeah that was Janine's idol I had it all along uh and he's like oh can I have mine back be like sorry bro <laughs> it's final five and then vote him out at five like right. it's you know it, like it and play your idol it. like yeah. and then he's gone uh or you know if, if people are targeting you and you need the idols at six and he's like oh can i have the idol back uh be like sorry bro and play your idol and then he's gone at six and then you carry it into five uh like i i, I mean yeah you have to have a hard conversation with him and he's gonna be mad at you but if you vote him out to take his idol anyway, he's still going to be mad at you. And he's probably going to be more mad at you if you just straight up deny giving him the idol. I, I get that. It is it is a different act. But for me, there's also the chance that I don't even need to get into that spot. Because if yeah. we get into six and he's immune and I don't need to play the idol, or maybe I just play the idol anyway, uh, like maybe I can convince him, hey, can I use your idol here because I need it and you're immune? And then you play the idol at six and then you still have the idol at five and then you play an idol. I just found this idol at five and I just mm-hmm. played this idol for myself. Uh, you know, there's a way that you can not vote him out and still get away with not even having to deny him the idols. Uh, so I just think that that there's really no point in my eyes to to doing that. Um, and, 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 and like I said, I don't think there's a point it, it, where it's like, oh, well, he needs to take Cody out either because I think he can probably beat Cody anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a good move. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, I, I would agree. I mean, like that is a, an interesting point that I, for me, I would, I, I'm just, I think I just hate conflict so much to be like, can I have my idol? Uh, no, I thought about it. I, I see where you're coming from, but I've decided that I'm going to keep it. I mean, I think that would be tough, but obviously something that he's able to do for me, like keeping the idol against Cody's will in any way, whether it's voting him out or, just saying no is like a very much like a pulling case of emergency move, which is like yeah. not the position at all that Jesse is in. You exactly. know, for people like, that were saying that, I feel like it, was, it like it makes numerical sense because like then he's literally in the final four. He has two idols down to four, and then he has the challenge in fire. But that's like a very defensive move for me. Like you won't necessarily control those votes. Like yes, you'll be safe. Then you'll get to four and like have to make something happen. Whereas right now they're like in the pound position. Cody says like, we're going to the end together. That's an ally. That's possibly a shield. I agree. Like he'd have a great chance against him in a final tribal council. And they still have like two idols between them that Cody might use on them. And they have like all the power to actually like enact moves in this offensive way, rather than being like, you guys do what you want. And I'll just sit here safe for two rounds after I voted out my best friend or look like I was allowing him to go, even though no one was doing that, obviously, or, you know, like really like making this like extremely evil move. That's not even that good a move. Like I think like Cody would be like, for what? Like what? Like, you know, like, I don't even think everyone would be like, wow, like, because it's not that smart a move. It's just kind of brutal for being brutal sake and for the sake of an idol. So I usually try to say like ally over idol. And I think that that's definitely the case here where like, if they can use their idols together down to four, then if Cody, if he wins like the challenge at four, he's probably taking Jesse through. Like that is a number that you have and that you need for so many reasons. And I wouldn't lose that just to have one defensive idol in the next round that again, you may not need, Cody could use on you anyway. It just feels like, it feels like just like a simulation move. Like you, you, you could have it down to four, but it does like it takes out of account all of the relationships and dynamics in that way. Um, that would make any of that make sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm glad we talked that through because I feel like that was a huge talking point the whole way. It has nothing to do with the episode, but I'm like, I'm a Taryn's thoughts on this, and I have any thoughts on it. So yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, any other thoughts before we uh, get to the next segment? 
Um, I guess we'll, we'll, we're going to talk through like a lot of what the players were doing. So I'm sure that it will all come out at that point. So are we doing the chili first or are we doing the stopwatch first? That's my question. I don't know. What do you, what we do you think? should have thought about this before. Um, let's do the chili maybe because then, and then we can go into like maybe talking about each player. Sure. All right. Should I play the song? Yeah. Take it away, Jacob. Take a wine feed and empty color. Sorry. Yeah. One, two, three. All right. So for the stopwatch viewers, um, this is where we give three, two, and one points to who we feel was the best, second best, and third best players of the episode. I found this really, really difficult. I want to hear yours first. I might honestly be open to ch changing my one point. I'm like so torn on it. Ooh, interesting. Um, I mean, I, I do. We, do I go top down or bottom up? Whatever you think is more interesting. Okay. Well, I think the top the top pick is easy for me because I think the the, the Jesse made a great play here. Um, yeah. I think that with holding two idols at final six with an ally with a theoretically front runner position, uh, you know, makes a good move. I have some small quibbles with it. Um, but, uh, I said last week that, you know, the movie made last week, I had some quibbles with, and I said, if he got away with it, then, you know, massive kudos to him. And it seems like he very much got away with it. Uh, I have no reason to believe he won't continue to get away with it, especially holding two idols. So, uh, yeah, three, three points to, uh, to Jesse here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Then number two, um, I think, uh, I think has to go to Cody. Uh, I think the, the two of them are both in a great spot here. Um, the only issue is that, you know, Cody kind of needs to get rid of Jesse, I think at some point, but I think this was a good, good, you know, round for him. He was immune. Uh, he still theoretically has access to an idol. Um, and, and I think that if Jesse is gone, I think he's the front runner to win, which means that like, Hey, if they make it to final four together, which is looking pretty likely at this point, uh, and Jesse is the target, then I think Cody's like, yeah, look at me. I made, I might've won the game. Um, and so I think this was a, a good week for him. He made a good choice picking, uh, finding the, the advantage, picking Owen to, uh, to win it. Um, and, uh, yeah, he gets the two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the one is hard though, right? <laughs> the one is hard. It's um, really hard. I will say it's definitely not Carla. Um, and yeah. it's, it's not going to be Owen either, just based on this episode, uh, which means I'm looking at, I mean, it's not going to be Sammy. Uh, so it's going to be for me between Cass, <laughs> Cass yeah. and mm -hmm. Gabler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Cass survives, which is great. Um how much of it was due to her, uh, you know, her own actions doesn't seem like a ton. Uh, Gabler seems like he's up to something, but I don't really know for sure that it's really anything good. And I don't and I and I don't know that he has a great chance to win. Um, so it's it's kind of tough for me. Um, but. I I think I, I think I have to give. I think I have to give it to to Cassidy. Uh, mm -hmm. and and the reason is, even though, you know, theoretically, she wasn't like super active in this episode, um, I think that in order for Jesse to feel comfortable making the move he does to keep Cassidy and and take out Sammy, he has to feel like he's good enough with Cassidy. He has to feel like he's got a good enough hold on where Cassidy goes from here. Uh, if she, if she stays, um, if he feels like I don't even have any relationship with Cassidy, I don't, I can't see myself working with her moving forward. Uh, or, uh, or like Sammy, she's too flippy, washy, flippy, lock, floppy. Uh, then, um, then I can't work with her. Like she has clearly developed the social bonds and the perception that she needs in order to, uh, beat out Sammy in this, in this vote. And I think that there's, a lot of value to that, even if it's not like flashy and very visible in this episode. Um, and on top of that, I think that this was a good spot for her uh, surviving where like, I think, I think it's going to look good to the jury. Whereas Gabler might be doing something smart, but I don't know for sure. 
And even if he is, it might not even look good to the jury. It might just look like he's playing scared. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that's that tips the scales for me to Cassidy. Okay. Well, that is interesting. I mean, I, I agree. The first two are more boring. Three points to Jesse. So phenomenal, obviously. And I just in some of the soft skills that Jesse is doing, um, the way that he externalizes, I tweeted this because I found it so funny. He says to Owen, I don't know why people are like keep not le looping you in or you know however he said it. And then Owen hilariously is like, yeah, it's annoying. And he's like <laughs> laughing about it. Um, and Jesse's like one of the main people not doing that, you know? <laughs> so um, he, I feel like he really externalizes always in his language of just like in really subtle ways of making it about everyone else. Owen's like, I don't know that I trust him, but I like him, you know, like, so at least he's got those relationships and Noelle in the exits couldn't have been, we listened to the exits after we did the podcast last time and she really praised his skills, his like um, damage control. She's like, I would have jumped off a cliff for him and he had blindsided her so many times. So it's just really so phenomenal. So I'm going to give three points to Jesse, two points to Cody. I disagreed with his thought process, obviously to go for Cassidy. I really feel Sammy was the right move there. Um, he's really close with Sammy. Like we know that they have a relationship. So it could have been like a personal thing, but as I said, structure should be more important, but they're a good team. He comes around on it. He's a good ally. Um, but then as well, I thought it was a good choice to pick Owen. He does find the advantage. So two points to Cody. And then one point I was really weighing up between a few. I thought of giving an honorable mention to Sammy. And there's a world in which I do it, you know, because I feel like he had a great episode. Like, I feel like this episode represented how he played the game. Like he did so chaos and he actually did achieve things. And he, like, I thought that Shot in the Dark was a creative way to think about it. I liked his timing. Like, I think it showed what a fun, risky, smart player he's been other than the first like minute of the episode. My issue is I feel like he's a bit overrepresented in the Chizzy charts because he got six points in the James vote and then it looked so much worse in hindsight. Like the way that it was shown to us was a bit different. Um, I will say Noelle said in her exit that he then went back after telling Carla about the James was a name. He went back and told Noelle that he had told Carla. So he flip flopped like four times in that hour. But like, I think like, that makes the move a little better to me because at least he like gave Noelle the, like she gave the vote steals to Owen. Like at least he gave her the heads up. And like, I know everyone hated it, but you can see how he was just trying to make like everyone happy and like really cover every base in that vote. Yeah, that was such a weird like thing where it was like, I was like, this seems like a mistake to go to Carla, but it worked. So I guess good job. And then the very next episode, he's like, now I got to vote Carla out. Like, yeah. What was he the point? He a lot. He flip-flopped so many. Like, that's when everyone caught up to him. And I mean, I, th I think, like, the general thought has been, like, every like everyone sees him as a flip-flopper. Clearly, they have this whole time, and we just haven't seen it because we don't see so much. I'm not 100% sure that that is true. Like, I think that maybe they kind of had the inklings, but were mostly fine with him. But it's when he flip-flopped so many times in that one vote that it, like, pushed him over the edge. Um, I think he was doing okay until then. I mean, it's just like the fact that, so he flips, he's flipping to get to Noel and Owen in the first place. Then he flips to tell Carla. Then he flips back to them, tells them he told Carla and is going with that vote. And I think that had Jesse come to him and said like, no, we're actually going with Noel, he like happily would have flipped back. Like that's very many flips in a very short amount of time. So I think that just like pushed him way over the edge, but he was like really trying something with that. And I feel like that's what started like a bad phase. And then I think he like, he was just too far in the hole this episode. Like, I think he actually did some things really, really well to try to get out of it. But it was just like, he, his game was on life support at that point. So I would have given, given him an honorable mention for the episode. I just feel like those points are already a little bit accounted for in the fact that like he got a lot <laughs> in the James vote. So like, it's an honorable mention rather than a point. Um, and then Owen, I really put a lot of blame on him for like not going for Jesse here. I feel like he's really, like it makes his large chances so much worse. But then I love the self-awareness that he had. I think the challenge win was obviously really impressive, but I can't give that to Carla because I didn't like this episode for her. And he was caught of the vote, you know, like for the first time, like Jesse comes to him and he's like, I'm going to go to Cody and you go to Gabler. Like he's really like in like the engine of that vote. And he's like, you know, voting correctly. Um, it's just, I, I was just, didn't love that. I feel like he of all people really should have made the move here. And he knows that he's, playing with house money so he should and then Cassidy I was thinking of because I think her reads are really great um I think it's again that subtle work that doesn't necessarily come out I think for me I didn't love that she's kind of being used in this as like as a pawn against Carla and like if Carla can mistrust her so much so quickly that's not great either like it's on Carla's yeah. read but like how is that even possible so because you gave a vote to Cassidy I'll split it and give it to Owen and kind of feel like then the episode is well represented um but yeah I think that 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 makes sense so this is what's so interesting now. Jesse just won the Chizzy again, got six points. 
He's now on 26 and Carla's on 25. He just passed Carla Ooh. for the first time in a very, very long time. So now Cody is on 19. He's in third. Sammy left on 15. James left on 12. Noel left on 10. Ellie left on six. Gabler's on five. Necker left on five. Cassidy is now on four. Owen is on three. And Janine left on one. Those are the Cassidy charts. Cassidy with and- only four is interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, and honestly, none of those points are from me. And I feel bad about that because, like, the, the guests have been giving her some points. I think for me what's hard is that she's in the group but is often not leading the thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, it, like it, I think it has been, like, an honorable mention, but it's not, like, top three. Maybe if we're doing, like, top five, she'd get a point or two. But it doesn't seem to kind of equate to top three, especially when, like, the ones and sometimes the twos are given to people who are just doing, like, an interesting singular move, which has not really been Cassidy's game. And I think also what's hard is I struggle, as you do, with – how much is it like people, she, she's always been like this, often has been this person who is the other option to go. Is it that they want to keep her or is it that she makes sense for people structure wise in terms of who she's connected to? And I think often I feel it just makes sense for them to go in a different direction for their game and their agency rather than being like, but I really want to work with Cassidy specifically. Um, and I felt that maybe like in the Ryan vote and I, I feel it here. So it's kind of hard to give that point. But again, like it's an honorable mention. I was thinking about it and I feel like she's been, you know, in that kind of realm a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's also interesting that, uh, that Jesse surpasses, um, Carla here the first time. Cause I, I, you know, not to spoil the stock watch, but I mean, I think you could, you could probably imagine, Uh, I think Carla has gotten the top rating all season. Um, and, uh, I I can tell you, uh, again, you, you would have known this based on how I've talked about it anyway, not going to be the case this week for me. Uh, so this oh, is definitely a tipping point, I think. Yeah, I think it, it's really very interesting because for, for Jesse and Carla, I mean, it's two more weeks. Like, there's one point separating them. I'm, like, really enthralled by, like, where it's going in the chili with both of them. Like, if Jesse continues on this trajectory, there's no stopping him. But Carla would have to do something amazing now, I think, to to stop Jesse. And that could be a game win and a chizzy win. So, yeah, crazy for Jesse to get us to that point. It's take, He has not missed a point this week or last week so yeah what was the week before that well and then yeah and then he didn't the the week before he played well i just like i gave you know there were two tribal councils so it was hard to give points so the last two weeks he has gotten like almost half his points it's been a great couple of weeks for jesse all right should we do the stock watch let's do it uh if you're watching the video i i do have their pictures up on the screen um it does still include Noel because, uh, I, you know, seven is not an even number uh, and it would have looked weird. So, yeah. Um, so here we are. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with. Um, you know what? Let's let's start with Sammy uh, yeah. as as the person voted out. Uh, mm-hmm. So basically how the stock watch works is I rate the players from one to ten based on how well I think they're doing. In the game, based on what we see in the edit, uh, I sort of look at it uh, with three different kind of criteria in mind. One is uh, their long term uh, prospects, like uh, how likely are they to win the game? That's that's huge. Uh, Two is like short term safety. Like, okay, they might be really they might be likely to win the game, but are they in danger in the coming rounds? Like, uh, is it possible that they might get voted out? Uh, and then number three, I tend to look at like, uh, episode performance. That's sort of like the, the, the chizzy part of it, uh, yeah. where it's like, uh, how well did they perform in this, uh, in this episode? How much did I agree with, uh, the decisions that they made, uh, in the episode? Um, and for the player voted out, they kind of exist on a different scale. Obviously they're gone. Their long-term prospects are dead. Their short-term, you know, safety is gone. Uh, and so it really just comes down to how did they perform in this episode, uh, given that they were voted out. Um, and uh, so it scales up a little bit, but, you know, I'm not going to be giving a person voted out like a nine out of 10, probably. Um, so for me, I feel like you might disagree with me on, on this. I think you're a little higher on Sammy's episode than I am. Um, but I think, you know, starting off with this. Like I, I was thinking if you had an idol, and you played an idol and it was in the majority, that would be great because then you could just play the idol and then Noel would just go home anyways. And you see where it got me. You see where it got me. Um, no, was... he's already dead. He's literally <laughs> already booted out. Please don't dance on the grave. <laughs> it was not great. 
Um, and then going after Cassidy is just a weird call to me. Again, though, it seems like it might have worked. I still would need to hear more from Cassidy. If I had gotten confirmation from Cassidy that what Sammy told me makes sense or what Sammy told me convinced me that I can't trust Cassidy, I'd give him a lot more credit for it as it stands. He says, it's, he says it feels true. That was a one like confirmation that he did have. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that's okay. That's fair. I, I didn't, I didn't catch like, that. He bought it. She like, she chooses Sammy over Cassidy in that moment. That's okay. All right. Uh, that's, I mean, that's what I was looking for. Okay. I'll, I'll give him more credit for that. Then I'll say, you know what? Solid play. He made it work. Um, and he gets Carla. The problem is, uh, <laughs> the problem is in some ways that actually is what's what signs his death warrant here. If he hadn't gotten Carla, he might have been fine. Yeah. No, no, that is actually hilarious to think about. He's like, I'm going to sow discord between Cassidy and Carla. And he did it so well, if you think about it. I, I yeah. don't know how this thought has only just occurred to you. He did it so well that they were like, wait, there's no point voting out Cassidy. Sammy, or Sammy already split them up. So let's vote out Sammy. Oh my God. <laughs> He's such an act of war against himself. Whoops. <laughs> oh my gosh that is so unintentional that is actually that's actually hilarious it's he, i think well. i think it speaks to the importance of especially in survivor making sure that you have like an eagle-eyed view of the game because you can say like okay i can split up carla and cassidy maybe get in with carla that'd be great but like what does that actually do to the game well what it does is it separates carla and cassidy and disincentivizes uh the or de-incentivizes the uh you know the idea of that feels split them tough up. Like I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not saying that like he needed Cassidy. to uh you know needed to do that and and in in, in a lot of cases like uh, like i was saying before like you usually don't have a jesse there and so if cassidy you yeah. know becomes a pariah usually people just vote out cassidy um, that's what people were saying right so um so I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not saying that this is something I'm, I'm criticizing him specifically for, but it's something I think to be aware of if you're playing the game to like, just try to think about it on that level. And because at the very least, you might then think, okay, maybe my play is to play up Carla and Cassidy as a threat for Jesse and Cody. And maybe, maybe, maybe that's my, maybe I need to play the pairs off of each other. Um, you know, just different ways that you can play with the structure. Um, but yeah. I would say, you know, give, I, I missed the line about Carla saying it feels true to me. Uh, given that she does say that, that confirms to me that he did some some work that, that landed, even though it did backfire ultimately. Uh, and because of that, I think it also required uh, Jesse really like thinking outside the box uh, to take him out. I'll, I'll, I was going to give him a three. I'll, I'll boost it up to a four. Wow, a four. I mean, look, I think if he had done nothing... They probably are just voting out Sammy. Like, that's the move that made sense to me coming out of the last vote. But then he does something that actually pushes the votes, like Carla to go for Cassidy. But then, yeah, it's done so well that they're like, now there's no point doing it. So it comes, it's like, if we had just stopped, like, as it was going around, if we could just stop a little earlier, that would have worked out great for him. I think, you know, like, he sowed that discord, I think, really well. He reconnected with Carla. I think that's a big thing as well. Like, coming off that vote, he did lie and then he apologized and that relationship was really reforming in a way that actually really scared Jesse, I think correctly. So that again, is like he did it too well and now it was becoming threatening. So, but like, again, you have to like credit him for reconnecting there. Um, I think like in terms of like his whole game, he talked about like losing Gabler as an ally, which I think is like an interesting thing. Like I feel like he needed that kind of woo or Mateo, Mateo type person and Gabler could have been that and he didn't hold on to it. But for this episode, I, I I think it was really good after that first minute, and I will give it a seven. A seven. Um, just in the there context of him being the boot. Um, I think as well, like I, something I wanted to say is it's kind of interesting. We talk about like these murgatory votes, these claustrophobic half immune votes. We've had it in International Survivor as well. And a lot of the time we call them compromise votes because people just get so scared that they don't want it to be them when they're like, the options are so constricted that they go for someone that like everyone's kind of okay losing. And we kind of accidentally got that in this episode with three out of seven people being immune, not on purpose. Um, and I think that that probably did come out. I mean, Sammy was definitely that person. I think once Carla will part with Cassidy, Cassidy even becomes that person. I think like no one was really going to vouch for them as much. Cody actually was for Sammy and that seemed like an important relationship, but at a point you'll kind of just let everyone go so that your closer ally or you 
doesn't go home and it becomes very much anybody but me. So I kind of wonder if that kind of claustrophobic vote came out in the compromise for Sammy. So tough one. Um, if I was giving him points based on how the last couple of episodes have panned out for him, it would be lower. But I actually think I will give him a seven for his actual boot episode. There you go. Uh, all right. Let's let's talk about Gabler then, because uh, we need to talk about the Alec Gabler kind of came up to the surface. The Alec Gabler who's I'm hiding in plain sight, hiding in plain sight. So much so that his plan was nowhere to be found from last episode. Yeah. Um, man, for, for as much as, you know, it, it feels like he is not doing well, is str- like strategically, he seems to be at least a, a, a little bit aware. I, I think he's aware of, of the strategic landscape. I think the thing that we talked about already where he might be falling short is the unawareness that, uh, and this all comes back to the same thing that I had an issue with at the time, which was that, you know, when he hit the merge, he said, I'm going to rat out Ellie and Janine immediately. And it's going to make me look really straightforward. It's going to make people trust me. And I said at the time, if I'm in, if I'm sitting there and Gabler and Gabler does that, I don't trust him a single bit for the rest of the game. And and I think he's a wild card. Um, and 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 for that reason, I'm probably going to write him off, like many I think people did uh, on the island, uh, as not very threatening. He can probably be somebody that I could bring to the end, and, and he probably won't win a, a jury vote. Um, and 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 I and I think that's working really well for him. But I don't know that he knows the extent of that. I think he, based on what he says in the episodes, at least, I think he feels like, yeah, they see me as honest, straightforward, not a threat because of that. Not that they see him as sort of like a, a, a bit of a wild card, somebody that's not going to be respected in the end. Um, and I think when he says he's hiding in plain sight, um, I think he feels like huh, everyone's talking to me. I'm I'm able, like, nobody's even thinking about targeting me. Like, that shouldn't be a surprise. You're not Dr. Will, right? Like, you're not, like, uh, somebody that that I think should be targeted at this point. Um, And so the fact that you're saying it like it is a surprise Mm. indicates to me that you might not be aware of why. Um, Which is, again, this is entirely based on the edit. And it's completely possible that he is even more aware of it than it seems. And they're playing his character up on the show. Maybe even he's playing his character up on the show like he does to the players in the game. Um, but uh, but that's my biggest concern with Gabler, even if he is doing really well strategically, because, and, and, I, and, I, and I say this all because I think he is actually doing very well strategically. I think he's making the most, or at least most of the most, out of the position that he's he's gotten into because of the perception that people have of him in the game. They don't think he's a threat. They want to bring him to the end. And he's taking advantage of that fact, or at least seeming to, by uh, not just like going along with things and wanting to make his own plan. Um, now, so far, this is all bite, uh, all bar- bark and no bite. All, you know, like uh, whatever noise alligators make with no actual alligator eating the, the move. Um, so... I, I can't give him a ton of credit for it yet. And I have to consider the fact that I still don't know that he can convert this to a win in the end. Uh, but I think I, I'm really excited about the fact that like it's it's actually a lot more complicated than I thought it would be with Gabler, where there is actually some validity to the strategy that he's that he's working. And I am actually having to think about like, could he win votes at the end? Could he make a move? Could he disrupt the power structure? Like he's an interesting player. I'll give him that. Uh, and so I'm going to give him, um, I'm going to give him a five here. Uh, I feel like, I think I gave him a six last week because he actually made some interesting moves. The, the, the difference here is that he didn't actively make the moves this time. Mm. I think there's still an opening for him to, to make those moves, but I just don't know if he will or how they will pan out. Um, and so complicated feelings on Gabler. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about that confessional. I feel like that's a confessional that Jesse should be having. The exact mm-hmm. same confessional, except yep. it's Jesse saying, like, no one is targeting me and everyone's working with me in a way that actually is unbelievable rather than, right. like, yeah, Gabler, like, people aren't super threatened by you. Like, it's not that amazing. So it's that lack of awareness that I'm a little bit worried about. And I also, we gave him a lot of chiffy points last week for not having the time to do anything then, but, like, setting something in motion. And then we didn't get much from it. 
Um, and that's kind of disappointing because I feel like this was really a time to do it. And I think that next week, it's not even almost becoming too late. It's like actually too late for me at that point. Um, I think the best thing he did in this episode was the way that he was so intentional about like doing the damage control with Owen mm -hmm. and really bringing him back and comforting him. And like, obviously he does have great truthful cover because he was told last minute, he's like, I was signaling to you. I don't know how true that is, but he's really like working on that relationship and he's obviously going to need it. So I thought that was good. We didn't get much else. And I'm also very worried about his long-term prospects, especially now when I'm like one of Carla, Jesse and Cody to me who would win out of the, over the other three is very likely to be sitting in that final three now because this move has been made, which is very tough for all of those people. So I think I'll also give him a five based on all that. I mean, that feels kind of high, I guess, as we're talking out kind of the long-term plans. He didn't even really do anything in this episode. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'll give him a four, maybe. Mm. Yeah. I think okay. that's fair. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, let's then, let's talk about Carla. How do you feel about Carla, Shannon? I mean, she's still like such an amazing player. Like if we turn up, talk about like long-term prospects. I still think, you know, she has an idol. They She now needs to be fine with Cassidy. We need to like recover that, even though it's being used against her, which isn't great. Um, and then go for Jesse and Cody who have two idols she doesn't know about. So that's not great either. Um, I still think if she gets to the end, she has a huge chance. She did win this immunity, which was so impressive from both of them. I just feel like she got so played in this episode. And I felt like I just really didn't agree with the move to go for Cassidy. I felt like it wasn't her move. I felt like she was being puppeteered. The read was wrong. I'm like, I'm struggling with it's like such a good player who has like what we probably would think was like the worst episode of everyone in this in the game for this episode, right? Yeah. What do you do with that? You tell me. You do the stock watch. What do I do with that? I think she's an amazing player. I think this was like a, not a good episode at all. It's a tough one. It's a tough one because, yeah, I think she is generally a very good player. And I also think this was a mistake that she can come back from. Um, I think that, like, she can, you know, when 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 Jesse goes to Cassidy and says, hey, Carla wanted to vote for you. The plan was for Carla to vote for you. She turned on you. Uh, there's an easy play for her to go to Cassidy and be like, uh, they pitched that to me and, and like uh like they're tr they're trying that that was true. their their whole plan is to take is to split us up like their whole plan and and maybe even you might get lucky and owen comes to you and says hey that was their whole plan all along and yeah. now even if cassidy's now like a little suspicious of you or a little bit betrayed or hurt or whatever you have a couple of things going for you we're not just gonna let jesse and cody play us like Right. Like we're not going to just let them get away with that. And uh, and two, we're not going to just let Cody and Jesse run away with the game either. Are we like even if you would hate me now or feel betrayed, there still has to be something. It's still not worth you taking me out when Jesse and Cody are still in the game. Like, come on, be smart about this. Um, so I feel like it's not as debilitating as it might seem. Um, and uh, given that she has connections to Gabler, um, you know, she should have a good opportunity to take a shot back. She still has an idol herself. She's still good at immunity challenges. Uh, and I still think she could win the game if she makes it to the final. So overall, I think she's still in a fine spot. Like, not bad, not bad at all. Losing Sammy wasn't a huge loss to her. Sammy wasn't a loyal ally. He just tried to vote her out in the, in the previous episode. Um, so, it, it, you know, long-term prospects and even, honestly, short-term safety are fine. For me, it's just a big hit to the episode performance. I mean, mm -hmm. what are you thinking? Take Trying to take a shot at Cassidy. She would be in a much worse position if she had taken Cassidy out. If that had worked, uh, it would it would have been terrible for her. Uh, yeah. And so given that that was what she was trying to do and she failed and because of it, she's in a better spot. Uh, I do have to definitely like get, I, I think I gotta, she's gotta take a big hit here for me. Um, so I'm going to give her a uh i'm gonna give her a six in this episode uh i think that um it was almost a five but e even as i was talking through i i feel like she's still in just like a good enough position that i don't think she's even average here i still think she's one of the front runners to win so it's hard to go even as low as a five for me but the episode performance definitely knocks her down uh, a few points here yeah i think okay i hate to be jumping on i, I will also do i'll do a six um, and it's all just on episode performance loss because I do think that she could still definitely win. She's still second in the Chizzy because she could still win the Chizzy as well. Um, but yeah, you don't love when a player gets saved from themselves. 
Like if yeah, what she yeah. wanted to happen happened, it would be much worse. Um, and yeah, when she's like, yeah, I need, really need to go on the offense. It's like, that's a legitimate strategy too, but that person is Jesse. So yeah, not a great episode. And the fact that like, when I was thinking through the chivy points, like I really like, I thought about pretty much even Sammy, even Gabler, probably before I went to Carla on this, which is wild for the type of player that Carla is. So I think a six is fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about Owen? What are your thoughts on Owen? Owen, again, like it's so hard. Long-term prospects, I think, were made much worse here. And I think are not great generally. I think he did some good stuff in this actual episode. I still think it's a really hard path for him. I, pro I gave him a chizzy point because I liked some of the individual stuff that he was doing. I love his awareness. I think that kind of puts him at a five for me bumping up some of that stuff. I'm trying to like do like the, the alchemy of the stopwatch of like how all these things are meant to, to um, sit together. But I, I wish so much that we could come here and say he was immune and he just on no time in this fantastical way, this completely theoretical way was just like, screw it. And just got everyone against Jesse who's been playing them all. Like just imagine like how we'd be talking about that. It would be so unbelievable. But I, I think it may be as right as what like, um, Rob and Steven were saying like maybe he just wants like a vote but he doesn't have time for a vote but maybe like it just a vote to just like keep the pace get into it and then like shoot off for the races there that's what I really hope for Owen I wish it was now and I think it's probably a little bit too late now but like he could have you know the best two episodes ever and maybe come out on top so I think what did I put it a five I think maybe a five is fair yeah I, I'm kind of at a holding pattern here with with Owen um you know, I, I do feel like he missed an opportunity here, but I I do think he has a chance to make a play next round. Uh, he could get, he could, you know, I, I think he probably needs to get a little lucky for it to actually land. Um, but I don't think the odds are like terrible. I think like, um, you know, I, I think maybe like a 45 or 35 to 40% chance that it lands uh, if he makes the play. Um, and so given that he has the ability to, that I think he's, he's still great at winning immunity challenges. Um, and I think that the self-awareness, everything we talked about at the start of this podcast is in play where I do think he's not, uh, th that he actually is drawing, um, with some, 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 uh, possibilities to win in the finals. If he can make it there, uh, I'm going to give him a, a six, but if he, if he doesn't make a move next time, this is tanking. Uh, and, the time was uh, now. <laughs> and if he does, then, then maybe it goes up. Who knows? Uh, that's, that's, that's where I'm at with Owen. Yeah. Um, okay. That leaves us with, uh, Cassidy, Jesse and Cody. Let's talk about Cassidy. Um, so I gave Cassidy the one, these are my top three, uh, mm -hmm. it, with the, with the Chissy, uh, points. And, um, they're also, I think like my top three contenders at this point. Like I think Cassidy and Carla, um, because Carla's in basically in my top four for winning potential, uh, and Cody might actually be a bit lower. I'd maybe go like Jesse, Cassidy, Carla right oh, now. Um, wow. Uh, just because I think uh, I think Cody needs Jesse out, and I don't know that he plans to do so. Um, so. Um, so I like their chances, but unlike Carla, Cassidy actually, I think, did decently in this episode. Uh, her social relation relationships are obviously good enough. Uh, maybe they're great. Maybe they're just fine. I don't know. We don't really see them. Um, but she's also a, a great performer in challenges. I think she has a great chance to win overall. I think she has a great story. Uh, she's playing a very different game than most of the other players, which I think is a good thing. Um, she is like not being like super cutthroat. She's being very true to herself, uh, and her values and who she is. And she's taking out people that came for her and she's surviving shots being taken at her and she's performing really well. Um, and I think that she's generally pretty likable. And I think that she actually does have a chance to beat somebody like Carla in the end, given that Carla is now, especially making some strategic mistakes. Uh, so I, I think that, I think Cass has a better chance of beating Carla than Cody has a chance of beating uh, Jesse. Wow. Um, and so I, I, I really like where she stands. Um, if, if I had seen her do more in this episode, I would have gone higher, but I'm going to give her a seven. Yeah. I mean, you're higher on her long-term prospects than I am because a lot of mm. the issue that I have with her in this episode is where she sits of like, who can you beat? If you think she can beat Carla, then she's I don't think not it's in impossible. Yeah. Spot. 
I mean, I, I would think that Cody has a better chance of beating Jesse. I think Cody is really likable. He has amazing relationships. And I've been calling this a pretty bro jury. Definitely someone like Ryan. I could see voting for Cody. Sammy now. James. They all had these relationships with Cody, actually, um, that I could actually see Jesse and Cody being actually like a really tough matchup, especially because they've both played really great games and have both been in the driver's seat so much. Obviously, Kyle and Cassidy have been in similar spots as well. But for someone like Kyla, like she had an idol over Cassidy. She now has two challenges over one. I don't know if that really matters, but I think she's just has been talked about as being in the driver's seat. Like we hear that about Cassidy being in proximity to Kyla. I don't want to go about Cassidy because it might upset James and Kyla. You know, like it, I feel like we see her very much as like the auxiliary to Kyla rather than the other way around and definitely is like the like beta alpha in that pair. So I think that she needs to make bigger moves to sit next to some easier opponents, even though I think she could articulate her game well. She's been on and all the votes. She's a very consistent player. I think that's the word for her. But that of being like super flashy, like that's what she's going to be able to hang her hat on is just like the maintenance of it all, which I know is really hard to show on screen. I just think that I think that I would want an, an easier pathway. And I don't love even her part of being implicated in this beef that she has now with Carla against her will, as much as that might seem unfair and not her fault. So I think just based on like the long-term prospects, an okay enough episode, I th- you know, again, great reads. Um, I just think I'm going to give her a six. All right. Uh, and then for me, uh, Cody, I think I, I think I also give Cody a seven. I, I, I don't, I just, I just don't see Cody winning. Um, and, and I think he He's can. My pick. He's my, <laughs> one of my two draft picks. So, yeah. Uh, I think he can win. Certainly. Uh, like I think on paper, he's got a lot of the the qualities that you need. He's got an idol. He's winning competitions. Um, he's got some good relationships. Um, but my issue is that like, I think next to Jesse, who is so visibly taking credit for things, so visibly being the person that's going around talking to everybody, doing the damage control, impressing people. Um, I think that I personally think that he'd have a really hard time beating Jesse, uh, if they were in the finals together. And even if he makes it to the, uh, final tribal without Jesse, I think he then might have difficulty explaining his game. Um, I, I always think back to when he went to steal from uh, Coco or whatever, uh, and he went all salesman on them, uh, and how it like rubbed Carla the wrong way, and it like kind of you know was a little weird. I don't know how well he's going to come off at Final Tribal, uh, it, trying to 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 explain his game, especially because I don't know that he fully like was there every step of the way with Jesse uh, on the game. Like, I feel like he disagreed with a lot of Jesse's decisions, but ultimately went with them, um, which doesn't leave him in a great place to explain the game away. Uh, So those are some of my concerns with Cody winning, but I think he's still in a great spot, obviously. Um, I think also, like, the fact that Jesse's holding his idol right now is is not the best (laughs) in the world. Uh, (laughs) but, uh, But he's still, he's in a fine spot. This is just me kind of, like, feeling like it's not there. Uh, even though on paper it, it should be. So uh, I could be off on this one. Yeah, I mean, never forget that you left him to me. It's the last pick of the draft. It's true. You took Necker. I, like, I had that decision that haunted me in the first draft where I took Brad over Heather. It really pains me to this day. But uh, not that she would have won, but like just for the longevity of that. Uh, I think for me, like I'm, yeah, a lot higher on Cody than you seem to be. I do see those long-term prospects. I think that people, like I have a different take on him going to, you know, to sabotage the other camp. Like I felt like other than Carla, everyone else was like, I like that guy. You know, I feel like he really grows on people. And even like Noelle has said, you know, that that uh, she really trusted him again after everything. And we see that like, people really actually seem seem to like him. Like Sammy said such good things about his recovery and how he really brought people in. I think we see that he's like a very like offensively social player. Um, And I think that, yeah, that, that comes Maybe like the Wendell to Jesse's Dom. Well, it's hard because it's like JT and Steven, Wendell and Dom, who is who? Um, I I mean, Wendell's like, seems like he's not nearly as kooky a character. Um, But yeah, I mean, if we're doing like social strategic, some people might say that that's the dichotomy. You know, the JT and Steven in that way, as it's been said, like Sammy said, he didn't connect as well with Jesse and seemed that he was a little bit 
maybe more introverted and Cody was like the big social player. I don't think that's true of all the relationships, but it might be like very broadly and probably kind of wrongly how you could divide those two. But like they're, they are a great team. I think that he had a good episode. I think, you know, he found the advantages we've spoken about. Um, and I, I see it. Uh, I think that he could have a good shot maybe against Jesse even just maybe not in the edit, but like in reality, I feel. And I don't know if that's going to end up happening. And if he gets there without him, you know, maybe like they both have to go, like they're sent to fire against each other. I don't know who would win that, but you know, he gets there. I, I see him having a really good chance against a lot of people left. So I think I'll, I would kind of put him a little bit lower because I so much disagreed with him wanting to vote out Cassidy mm-hmm. here. I feel like it was the wrong strategic instinct, even though he had that connection with Sammy. And as much as he came around on it, I, I, it wasn't his decision. It wasn't what he was really driving. So I will give him a seven. But honestly, like that brings it down from what I truly would have made an eight. Like that's how high I am on him right now. All right. Well, that leaves us with Jesse. Uh, I think I said last week that if if Jesse, if I knew Jesse would get away with it, I would have given him given him a nine. Um, and and you know, lo and behold, uh, he, he clearly got away with it. So uh, not only did he get away with it, but then he goes on to make another good move here. Another one that I have a small issue with that I think could be the crack that, you know, uh, ruins the whole thing. But uh, I've, I've got to give it up to him. I've got to give him the nine here. I feel like uh, he's just in such a strong position. He's holding two idols. He's very clearly been the driver of the season through the last couple of votes. Uh, he, nobody's looking at him yet. He's got a loyal ally in Cody, seemingly. Um And it just like, it feels like, it feels like it's his game to lose and he might still lose it. I mean, uh, I I don't think he's immune from making errors clearly, but um, you know, the the game is in the palm of his hand. He just needs to not drop it. Yeah. This is probably the spot that Omar was in uh, at a a similar point. I think, I know there's been comparisons to them in the way they've been playing the game and whether they are or aren't villains has been like a big topic of debate. Uh, I think for, what was your rating? A nine. A nine, yeah, so you are giving him a nine. Um, I'm also going to give him a nine. I just think he is so good. <laughs> like, if you think, like, it's crazy to think about how much of this game he's been the swing vote. Like, if, if you care about players having, a- having agency, which I absolutely do, I love that in a player, like a player that can control their own fate in a really successful way. Even going back to Vessi, he was in the middle making the decisions. And then through this merge, I mean, coming in, they turn on Vessi. Like, he's in the driver's seat there to take out Dwight. At the split tribal council, he and Cody have been the swing votes. Now, both of these last episodes, they've been the swing votes. It's just unbelievable how much power and control he's had in decisions I've agreed with as well. Like, I haven't even been like, yeah, I would go a different way. Um, I've liked the decisions. And he shouldn't have that much power with no one coming for him. So many of the things didn't pan out that could have been against him. I think he's an amazing player. I think we see his soft skills. I think we see his intention. He's given the chance to really vocalize that he thinks about the game in a way that I just truly love. So yeah, three cheesy points, six cheesy points across the board, cheesy winner, and I'm also going to give him a nine. There you go. There it is. That's the stock watch. We did it. Yeah, and the cheesy, both things. We did yes. both things. Yes. Fun times. I feel like it was great to break it all down. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew this would be a good episode to, to talk with you about because yeah. I did feel like there's a lot going on. I feel like we we knew more about the details, even though I'm still in the dark about a lot. I felt like I knew more about the details of the move in this episode. Uh, and a general sense, I feel like I have a general sense of like a couple of end game plans from a couple of people, which is good. So uh, a lot to break down for sure. Uh, or anything else, Shannon? Yeah, not really. I mean, I was just thinking I will pay money for you to watch Australian Survivor. Your frustrations with this. I know there's a lot more time in Australian Survivor, but they will make things up. And like, truly, like, in, like I know that they, you know, hid like, for example, Jesse Happy Janine's idol, but I will, I, I just want you to watch an episode. Have you watched any of us? You have watched. Have you watched? Some? I did. I, I watched like the first two thirds of the first one that came back. And Maybe then I watched that one. I watched uh, a good chunk of the second season with, with Luke. Yeah. Uh, no, but what you don't know is that they changed the editing team since then. Oh, did they? Because I Have think I liked the editing, even though yeah, it was no, a lot. Yeah, no, it's very different. It's very, very different. So they fired that editing team as far as I know. I mean, I don't really know. It's a different vibe. And now it's a lot more, I don't want to say manipulated, but like there's more of an agenda. People people will be purpled way more. Um, we've uh. had people go with zero confessionals, go home, zero confessionals. Um, It's much more like protagonists and side characters or even just like, 
back carry like the no, like background characters. Um, That's so, so lame. Very, Literally, like my yeah. that was my favorite thing about Australian Survivor. Oh, the so edit was now. so good. Why would they? Yeah, that's I mean, like they're they were literal yeah. they were literal strength, and they they fired it. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't. I mean, they they gone. I I feel like it's also reaching its peak more lately. So it's yeah, it's I I modern Australian Survivor, current Australian Survivor. I need. I need your thoughts because from a big brother, like I get all the information and then I can suss it out from there to. As, I mean, is it as, still like three episodes of like two hours each? Yeah. A week? It's a lot of content. It's a lot. Of it's content. way too much content for it to not be as good as the, as, as even as the, <laughs> yeah. the, the previous seasons. No, you have to see the, the confessional counts will be like, someone will have like 150 confessionals, but someone will have like eight. Oh um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite different, but yeah, we come to it from different different places. We're trying to work that out. Yeah, I mean, uh, if people, if the Stockwatch listeners want to follow me, it's at Shannon Gates, and my the global podcast with international survivor players is on every week at the international survivor wrap ups feed. Also, like your podcast, Taryn, reality TV wrap ups, and the survivor wrap feed. And yeah, next week I have Dino from Survivor South Africa as my guest, also covering the Crown. And Australian Survivors coming back in January. They are currently releasing the cast. It's heroes versus villains with some returnees, not all. And like Nina Twine is on it, Sandra's daughter. So she's a returnee in Australian Survivor. So yeah, if you're keen on checking out International Survivor, you don't know where to start, feel free to get in touch with me because it's really fun. I know that I've just like completely been terrible about Australian Survivor. And like, it's no, it can be really fun. Looking forward to the next season. And it often is being so negative. It often is really fun. Um, get in touch, follow along. Cause yeah, we have a good time with it. And Taryn, as the host, I should ask you, what, where can people find you? What do you have going on? What can people check out? Well, I, I mean, I would say, uh, you know, check out Australian Survivor just to listen to Shannon talk about it. Oh. I mean, uh, that uh, if, if you're not already a listener of Shannon, you're doing it wrong. Uh, she has such incredible passion for the show and it, and it just comes through in everything that she does. Uh, and and she, not only is she passionate, but she's also very detailed and super knowledgeable and smart Aww. about strategy. So uh, great, great content from Shannon. Um if you want to uh, get uh, terrible content, you can check me out on <laughs> Twitch, twitch.tv slash Darren Armstrong. Uh, I watch the episodes live every week on Twitch. So what happens is um, you can jump into the into the stream. You can chat with people as they're watching it. I'm on the screen. I'm watching it, reacting to it live. We're, we're talking through what happens during the commercials uh, and reacting to the things as they're happening uh, on the show. So it's, uh, it's a good time if you want to hang out and do that. Uh, and then, of course, you know, doing the the Stockwatch uh, podcast, um, you know, every week, uh, rating the players. And I think the circle is coming up soon. I'm sure there'll be coverage for that uh, and, you know, uh, a bunch of other stuff. But just uh, find me over on Twitch. That's the best place to find me. Yeah, well, turn to Tarot. I mean, I, your content's amazing. I mean, that's why I really always look forward to doing this crossover and the two times that we've done it. Like, I was listening to your content the last couple of weeks and you had some amazing points that really think outside the box, which I always really appreciate from an analysis perspective. I really love the point that you made last week about um, not going for Noel, like keeping her as a shield, but taking out someone like Owen, which would have been funny, given that her kind of number ones are always being taken out for being close to her. We could have done it one more time. Like, how far can we take this? Would have been an interesting one because maybe, yeah, maybe Owen will slip through to the end and cause some damage, as we're saying. So such an interesting thought, but I always love chatting about the show with you. And I don't know how we're going to sign off. Which one of us is doing that as the host? I don't know. I, it's, uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll find a, a way to to do it. It'll be a good time. I don't have a good soundbite for this. What is this? Cody, when you down. feel comfortable, does that make you more nervous that you're feeling comfortable? I get more nervous when I'm comfortable. It's just some great tribal talk from Jeff. I think right. that's how we can end it. I want to say not knowing how to sign off the show because we're both hosts it's kind of like playing survivor it's like you know it's, it's very much about anticipating the other person trying to get mm. it right and if you do it it can be really weird and awkward so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna say goodbye thank you all for listening thank you taryn and goodbye <laughs>